Avenge me! In a dreadful night of reckoning, the forces of darkness strike with blood-freezing horror. By the maniac called Geronimus, a dead man with the monstrous power to return from his grave. Spiritually and physically deformed. My perfect body. Mankind is made up of inferior creatures. His power has been released at last. And his noble crusade against sin lives again through me. A nightmare of diabolical happenings conceived in a murder-haunted house of blood. A bone-chilling shocker. Yes, yes, y'all, it's going down right now. Episode 246 of the Triple Shots of Moods and Horror Podcast is coming at you live and direct with the homie, JP, also known as the Mexican. And back again, we got Tyler, also known as Mr. Saucedo, a.k.a. Freeman Part 2. And of course, he's back in the house. And I'd like to welcome back to the show and represent so many damn horror podcasts, I can't even name them all. Our boy and your boy, Venom. AKA Venom. And I'd be your host, Moods. Yeah. What's going on, dudes? Yo, yo. Yo, greetings and salutations. Is it, it's, it's, it's just one of those things where everybody has to pause after I say what's going on. Like nobody wants to answer. This it's like every I'm show. like being polite and letting other people go first. Then oh, I see. Okay. Does, uh, I, I, I always wonder that because every time I'm like listening back to the show, I'm like, why is there always a pause? Every single time I say what's going on, like no one's like having a good day or whatever. I was like, panic and just don't know what to say. <laughs> just like ah, I'll wait. So Venom back on the show, man. And you know, I said AK Venom because I, I was actually thinking about this the other day, and I swear to God, I don't even know what your real name is. So I'm like Venom, AKA Venom. It is literally the strangest In thing. In all like, honesty, uh, my. <laughs> in all honesty my mother is the only person on the planet that still calls me by my name um <laughs> I, i've had the mr venom i've had the mr venom moniker for over a decade now right. to the point that my wife and my co-workers just call me venom <laughs> <laughs> it's well, funny that's like, too. that's like moods well it, it is like it is like me actually yeah. when people call me by my real name i'm like man it's so weird to hear and it happens at my new like at my job and like people will see and i'm like fuck it's so weird to hear that man this is it's so weird to me but no i get that i get that but mm-hmm. yeah that's awesome man so back on I don't the even show hear my own name anymore so how how many shows are you actually currently recording do you even actually know? i've toned down oh yeah i've actually toned down my podcasting uh, over the years i've as i've kind of honed my podcasting skills i've kind of decided to just um, pick a few different shows that I feel really passionate about and continue working there. So over the last couple of years, I've actually said goodbye to a couple of podcasts like Theme Warriors and the Horror Cast, mm. um, and just kind of stuck with my main core shows on the No More Room in Hell family. So I'm currently on four different No More Room in Hell shows. And then I'm still technically officially a co-host for the In the Mic of Madness podcast, though we have not recorded an episode in over a year right but we have we also haven't officially called it quits so the potential for that one to come back is always out there but obviously rebecca being busy with all her independent film projects Mm -hmm. and a couple of other podcasts that she also does you know um the future's not looking bright for that one but yeah pretty much i'm i'm loyal to the no more room in hell brand of podcasts now so you can look for me in there And that's the thing with people doing, you know, the acting thing and podcasts where like schedules are just, it's the worst enemy in the world, Mm -hmm. you know, right? So, so what, what currently are the four shows from the, the no more room in hell moniker? 
All right, so we got the main show, No More Room in Hell, a bi-monthly yep. show where we look at, uh, you know, the more unusual releases in the horror genre. Uh, we've got Fresh Cuts, which is, uh, of course, uh, our our weekly show where we look at the newest releases in the horror genre. Uh, we have uh, Creature Comforts, which is a creature feature podcast that I do with Don and Nelly and Derek B., and then we also have uh, the Crystal Lake Gift Shop, which is a episode by episode retrospective of the Friday the 13th, the series uh, from oh. 1987 to 1990. So, yeah, those are the four shows. Oh, that's cool. I actually I don't remember about that one. Actually, that's interesting. OK, that one's very. Yeah. Right. That, that, that's cool, man. Yeah. So fresh cuts, man. So speaking of fresh cuts and like we we tend to bring up every every episode this time of year. Um, because it is 2013 and we're getting down to the nitty gritty. I mean, the 2023, <laughs> 2000, <laughs> did I say 13? Yeah. Okay. 2023. It's, like, it's scary too. Cause it just doesn't seem that long ago. No, it doesn't oh, act. Dude. Sorry. 2023 is coming to a close. I mean, the, the shows are going to start popping up. The top 10 lists are going to be start popping up here and there and stuff. So how is your perspective? What, like, what is your perspective on 2023? Cause like our consensus over here at the 22 shots, is it's been a pretty shit year man like it, it, it's to the point where i haven't watched a whole lot I, i'm like 35 movies deep but like i don't feel comfortable making a top 10 list as of now i still got a few more i need to watch but um like what what is your overall outlook on 2023 i mildly disagree i'm not going to say that it's a shit year it's definitely a down year mm -hmm. especially from some of those you know like the second half of the 2010s had some spectacular years there yeah obviously compared to years like that 2023 is going to suffer yeah. but um i i'm 112 movies into 2023 <laughs> and i could definitely oh do a God. top 10 right now right i hope so oh you couldn't do a top 10 out of 112 movies man <laughs> Yeah, that, that's quite it. I'm just and actually I'm, uh, mm -hmm. like I'm I'm curious on what you're watching because I generally watch, you know, between 100 and 120, 130 every year, too. I'm nowhere. I'm not going to reach that mark at all this year. It's just I haven't really found anything that I've been interested in. I just don't feel like wasting my time. I've been so busy this year. But but like, what have you been watching that I may have been missing out or all of us at 22 shots or whatever? Because, I mean, that's a lot of films. I don't know because I, I'm actually phys I'm looking at my list right now, and a lot of it is just a lot of the independent fare, um, you know, that'll get released like on Amazon Prime and stuff like that, or Tubi, you know, stuff like a uh, Viking Wolf and uh, The Lair, Hunter Killer. That was a good movie, and that's a movie that nobody talked about. I haven't heard um, of it. Came out three. Yeah. Just named. I hmm. was looking up yeah, movies Hunter. today, and I was even only finding like finding like the same shallow pool of like maybe like 50, 60, 20, 23 movies. Hunter mm. killer. I'm going to write that yeah, down yeah. right now because, yeah. Shit. Uh, oh, and it's it's hunt her, kill her. Oh, so, oh. Two words, oh two okay. Words. Yeah. It's actually a great little movie. You know, it's a basic slasher, but it, it's the kind of movie where you know who the killer is pretty much right away. So it's not like, like a big mystery. It's really more the cat and mouse game. But it's basically a woman. It's her first day on the job on an overnight shift in a warehouse. She's by herself and she gets stalked by a group of men. I'll leave it at that. I um, love it's such a simple concept on the night shift. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, it's such a simple concept. And I, I feel like they pull it off really well. And it has an incredibly satisfying ending. Anybody who knows me knows that I'm a very petty and vindictive person. <laughs> so the ending of Hunter Killer was very satisfying to me. <laughs> right. I can. Already, yeah. OK, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Hey, that, that's a good idea for a show right there, man. Like the 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 twenty four hour, shift. yeah, the night shift, yeah, yeah, yeah. the graveyard yeah, shift. I, but I like, yeah. I, yeah, I've always been a fan of like being like, you know, I've worked some night shift jobs. I know you have, but it's, yeah. so it's always like, you know, skeleton crew of people. If you know you're not even by yourself, and it's just perfect for a horror movie because like you're you know by yourself and it's right. late at night. It's that setting, man. It just works for you, man. It's good stuff. <laughs> awesome. I have to check that out. Yeah, that's something. What, what else? What else has been tickling your fancy from 2023? I mean, um, when Evil lurks, I, I can't stop talking about that movie. I, I saw it three times opening weekend in theaters. It's wow. It's the uh, the follow up uh, from Paco Pass. Uh, excuse me, Paco Plaza. Excuse me. Oh, okay. And, 
Oh, I'm sorry, not Paco Plaza. I'm thinking of I'm thinking of Sister Death. Um, uh, Damian Ruga, the guy who directed Terrified. Right. Oh, okay. His follow up oh, okay. movie. Oh, uh, cool. yeah. That fucking movie shook me. I, I'm dead serious. There, I there's was images. There's iconography. About... <laughs> is it is it, um, <laughs> is it Spanish or is it uh, English film? It's yes, Spanish. sir. It's yeah. Spanish. It is. It's it's from it's from Argentina, just like Terrified. Um, yeah. yeah. It's it's just a very very different type of possession movie. Like I'll say it's a possession movie, but don't expect to see Catholic priests and girls floating in the sky. No no no, it's a very very different type no, of possession. Movie. You know, to be honest, man, that's what I really liked about the movie too. Is that like you know, there's so many modern possession films that just have to do with religion and straight you know Catholic Church, and you got the you know the white collars and shit and. You know, this one was a totally different take because it was very like that rural kind of feeling to it. And and, and I, I like the whole idea behind it, too. It was very interesting how it all went down. I thought it was really unique and it definitely was a standout for me this year. Um, I, yep. It took me a little bit to see it. I, I'd been hearing about it, hearing about it. And then I finally got to watch it and it was like, wow, you know, thank goodness for Shudder. Because, I mean, to be honest, we, we talked about Shudder recently you know a couple times on the podcast about how they've been pretty not great this year you know they haven't really well, been like the last yeah. two years i'd say yeah like they i mean I'll you agree know, with yeah that. you're yeah. right like two three three four years ago like i mean the majority of our list it seemed like they were fucking shutter exclusive films like they were putting out a lot of really good material and then uh, it just it's been falling off the table for sure but that was a stick out from this year for sure uh from shutter and i was like damn dude that's uh i like it i like it and when i hear possession mm -hmm. It's like a lot of people these days, they kind of like stray away. It's like 10 years ago, man, with like a zombie film, new zombie film. I don't want to watch it. Yeah. The markets, markets fucking flooded. You know, it was like found footage. Another found footage film. I don't want to watch it because the market's all flooded and shit like that. I hear possession. I'm like, ah, okay. But like when you have a decent take on a possession film like this one, I highly recommend it. I, I definitely feel like it's definitely one of the stickouts for the year. So awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So what else from 2023? Just get, get run off a couple titles. Uh, let's see. Did you see Bo is a right. uh, or there's you an consider that one a horror film? Uh, I do not consider it a horror film. Okay. Uh, and I did see it and I did not enjoy it greatly. Mm. Um, I, I There were elements of it that I did enjoy, but I think the frustration level watching that, my, my personal frustration level watching that movie was just too high for me mm. to enjoy it. Just at every turn, Bo was annoying the shit out of me. Okay, so and, and I understand what, that's the character. So, oh, yeah, so it was the mm -hmm, character. What it wasn't like the actual narrative to it or whatever. No, no, the narrative had a big part of it too. Like the, just the entire thing just felt like this, just this wishy washy little dipshit, um, no. you know, frittering away his life in fear, and it just does nothing for what, me. What is the you movie? know what I mean? Um, Bo is afraid. Uh, oh, okay. The yeah. Army. I mean, Joaquin Phoenix is great. Joaquin Phoenix is brilliant in just about everything he does. But and he's still good in this as well. He's great in this. But it's just I can't get behind the character. I can't get behind the narrative. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just felt myself uh, by the second act. I had pretty much lost interest. But it's it's Ari Aster, so I kind of felt obligated to finish it, even though I didn't really want to. And mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to say I regret finishing it, but three hours is a little hefty for that movie. Right. Right. I loved yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, that's great. Book. I mean, there, there's yeah. definitely an audience for that movie. So I, that means, I, so I would not call horror, though. Like, so yeah, so it means it was very pretentious then? Yeah. If, oh, it was super misses. pretentious. It was like a, it yeah. was a Peter Greenaway movie on steroids. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with that. Uh, let's see here. There was an in, a little indie movie that came out about halfway through the year called The Devil Comes at Night. Um it's very much a character driven film, not a lot of gore, not a lot of, uh, you know, horror set pieces necessarily, but it's just kind of an overarching atmosphere, like a dark atmosphere of the whole thing. Um, the story I thought was really cool. And then this is a movie that also had another satisfying ending. Um, mm. I, I'm really, I'm a big guy when it comes to endings, you know, yeah. uh, if, an, yeah. if a movie ends strong, it's going to leave a good taste in my mouth and I'm going to remember it months down the line. Um, and some of the best, well, best, quote unquote, some of my favorite, let's go with that. Some of my favorite movies from this year are those endings that really, really leave me satisfied where I can walk out of the theater with a smile on my face. And, you know, it, it's a, it, it's more rare every time I go. But when it mm -hmm. does happen, it's still incredibly special. So, 
yeah, like I said, with stuff like When Evil Lurks, I mean, I, I knew that was my number one movie of the year after seeing it the first time. Like I said, I saw it three times opening weekend. I could not get enough of that film. Watched it again when it hit Shudder, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. Um, as I look on my list, yeah, I mean, there's I, I have a lot of like 7.5s and 8s. Not a lot of nines this year. Obviously, When Evil Lurks will get a nine. I'm on the fence on the new Evil Dead movie. Um, I liked it. I liked it a lot. I just don't know if it's top 10 worthy for me, you know, with the, with the amount of movies that I've watched, it might be a little bit of a stretch for me to, you know, get that in the, like the number nine or 10 position. But, you know, uh, you know, I, I haven't even started my rewatches yet. So, you know, we'll see where that goes. But yeah, uh, it is a down year, but I definitely don't agree that it's a shit year because I, I at least am able to find stuff that still entertains me, that still makes me happy. Mm -hmm. That still gives me that, you know, evil shit eating grin at the end of a movie, <laughs> like something like, like I said, when evil lurks or the sadness, you know, when I'm done watching movies like that, it's like, I feel like I just ran a marathon and I love that. Yeah. The yeah. sadness was fucking something special, man. It was, it was such a great film. Oh yeah. But I, I just yep. feel like this year i mean i i, I mean I, when it comes to endings man i'm i'm the same way man like you can have a total slow burn like like i always i always stress this man like you know if you're gonna sit there through a slow burn and the payoff isn't there it's like it's like almost gut punching like like what the fuck was, was i just doing for the last 97 minutes you know kind of thing but at yeah, the end it's, it's all payoff man like it, you know and and, and and we we talk a lot about payoffs like you know during italian hormone too like with you know giallos and stuff sometimes you know this great giallo and, and the payoff totally sucks and it kind of ruins it a little bit for me you know or it's so good and you're like oh fuck the movie was so slow paced whatever and then the payoff is so good and you're like okay you know that was satisfying it's but just I get like, that. It's, it's the last impression of it so like sometimes <laughs> like if you really like the movie and it was just fine you can get away with it but if it's like something you just liked and then the ending's weak it just yeah you I mean, it, it, you get those moments too, though, where the whole film is so good and then the payoff isn't really that great. Like the ending is not that yeah. great, but you're like, eh, okay, it does bring it down a little bit, but you know, those, those payoffs, man. You yeah. Know? The most disappointing thing for me is like when you're watching like, like a really good, like crime thriller or something that's just like so tense. And then like, it's like a, it's like a 10 out of 10. And then you get to the end and the ending is like, soft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, 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 it's like a two minute wrap up. It's like a two minute wrap up with like no action or whatever. You know, you're like, what the fuck just happened here? Come on, just, you, gotta, you gotta give me more of that. But uh, yeah, no, one of the films I've been wanting to see this year is, I, I don't even know if I can pronounce it properly, but it's like Ennis Men. Ennis Men. Oh yeah, Ennis Men. Ennis, Ennis Men. Yeah. That's yeah. one I've that's had on my that's radar. That's on my high, high up on my list. Yeah, it's one of the shortlisted films. I want to watch Bo is Afraid just because, you know, I, it's, uh, I'm curious on it. I just want to mm -hmm. check it out for myself. Um, I think Malium, I think that's another one I've been wanting to check out. Um, but like those three films mm, are like, Malum was good. What, what, Mal, Mal, it, it was good. Is, is it worth, it's worth checking out though. It was good. I prefer, I mean, it, I prefer the original. better. Yeah, mm. exactly. Yeah. It I was mean, all they, right. they I think definitely I ramp up the gore. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm right about there too. Yep. I think that like we we've discussed this many times and like, you know, over the last bunch of years, there's always been this like abundance of indie films that have you know high buzz you know like films that you don't necessarily have to go yeah. out of your way to like search and find and stuff like that there's always a buzz about these films i love hunting for indie films and you know finding that gem and stuff like that but it's just this year i feel like i haven't heard of too many like you know kind of lower budget indie films that have that type of buzz is there any of that level of film that you feel like you know that people need to check out that you've seen at all not really, man. The movies that have surprised me this year are the ones that I knew nothing about going into it. Right. Enos Men and uh, The Outlands, I think it was called, were two oh, movies yeah. that had a lot of festival buzz, and I did not like either one. Okay, so, so I didn't hear about the second one, but Enos Men, like, that was one yeah, I heard about. The I, Outlander I think last or something. Year, it must have, maybe it was late last yeah. year, early this year. I don't know what, but I've been wanting to see it all year. And so, yeah, and, and, and I heard that Enos Men is one of those films where the payoff isn't really there. I think I've heard from a lot of people that the, the film was good, except, and then the payoff isn't there and it leaves you kind of distasted a little bit. Well, I think, I think the director doesn't give his viewers enough credit to fig for them to be able to figure out what's going on. Oh, like okay. there is a payoff. Oh, the problem is I, I knew what the payoff was a half hour before the movie ended. Right. So, you know, um, it's kind of like one of the movies that we're going to talk about today. It's like when you know that the, the path that a movie's going down, it, 
it makes the it almost makes the pacing of the movie seem really slow because you know right. where it's going and you're just kind of waiting for them to get to the next step. Right. Um, and that's kind of how I felt about Enos Men probably like 45 minutes into it. I'm like, oh, I had that, you know, that aha moment where I'm like, oh, OK, I know what's going on now. And right. then it just it just felt like a drag getting to the end for the movie to actually tell you what you already knew. So, yeah, it's still worth watching. It's a very artistic film. Um, not a whole lot of dialogue. So, you know, if you're if you're into stuff like Skinnamarink, <laughs> then, uh, yeah, Enos Men might be right up your alley. Does Skinnamarink even have any dialogue in it, for fuck's sakes? Like, man, it has, it has it's got dialogue. Well, I don't know that it's I don't know that it's dialogue so much as just random people saying a yeah. line here. And there. Yeah, I think it's just like <laughs> random words, right? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't yeah, like that. Does that count as 2023? Yep. Yeah. I, I didn't like that movie at all, but I think that's something everyone should watch just because of like how like unique it is. The skin yes. of uh, It's I'll definitely it. unique. I don't, wouldn't say pay for it. I, I think a lot of people wouldn't say maybe in the in the better part of being unique. I don't know. I, I mean that movie is definitely like right when I right when I saw that one, I was like, this is the 2023 film that's going to separate everybody. Yeah. I right? you either love it, like, it or hate it. There's no one that's like, yeah, I like skin right is pretty good. You know, it's decent. Like no one talks like that. They either love it or they hate it kind of thing. Right? I watched it like really late at night, like on my TV at home, just sitting up close with all the lights out alone. I was like, if this movie's going to work, cause it's scary. If you do this, like I'm going to try. And like, yeah. there was maybe that one part where the guy was like, look under the bed. I was like, don't look under the bed. Don't do that. But yeah. like other than that, like it's just the movie did absolutely nothing for me. So I don't know. Maybe it's just more yeah. effective, like on different people. I just felt like it, it was definitely feel it felt so pretentious. I, like it oh, felt yeah. artsy for the point of being artsy. And I, I just I would like the whole time I'm watching, I just felt like, man, there's so many people that are gonna be fucking blowing this thing like a fucking porn star. It's, it seems like the movie I yeah. would be like, this is the masterpiece of yeah. 2023. But like, you know, I've watched movies <laughs> and like, you know, I try to take it for what it is, and I'm like, man, this shit is boring as fuck, dude. Like, That's I, would, I was so bored. I was like, Yeah, dude, like we just fucking end. Like, and I and <laughs> you guys know me, I love slow burns, but this isn't a slow burn, this is a no burn. Like yeah, the fire never got started, man. It's like a, a hundred minutes of like watching, like when you were like, when you're a little kid trying to watch the TV, like the porn channels, and like, but it was blocked out, so you got the wavy <laughs> signal. It was like an hour, hundred minutes of watching that with some spooky noises. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't want to sit here and just it, shit on it, it because it's like popular to shit on the movie. But I'm just telling, I'm just being honest. No, I like, think people should still see it. It just did nothing for me. It yeah, just, but I I'm mean, sure, like to some people, yeah. if they put themselves well, in the same situation, it's way scarier. Like I said before, man. Like if if I'm doing reviews on this on this podcast or on my channel or whatever, I if I just like a movie, I never tell people not to watch it because yeah. you might get something more out of it yeah. than me. I never ever there, I think there's been one or two occasions and I've literally reviewed thousands of movies where I've said do not watch this shit because I can't see anybody liking this thing like it's happened once or twice yeah and, but I never like discourage this is barely people. a movie I never discourage people from from because I like things that people fucking hate right yeah. and I understand oh, for, that mentality sure. right I understand that everyone has different tastes so if I don't like something I'm not telling you not to watch it because I don't like it because what I like may not be what you like so it is what it is, man. I just, I get that from that, yeah. you know, from that point of view. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. 2023 is going to mean, I think it's going to be an interesting, um, top 10 show. I, I feel like there's going to be, oh, I still it's need to pretty think, wide I, open. I still need to see thanks uh, Thanksgiving because of my, oh, my yeah. shit town never yeah. got it. My shit town <laughs> never got it. So yeah, I'm try to catch that <laughs> this week. go fucking figure. Like I saw the trailer in the theater like three times. Cause I saw every theatrical that came to town this year which I believe was 17 or 18. We missed a couple um, that didn't come, but uh, but we didn't get that one. What the fuck? Yeah. You know? So, Ouch. I know. I, I was really <laughs> pissed about it. And I believe that's probably the last theatrical horror of the year. Um, so, there was a... Yeah, I feel like we'll definitely get think. one in December. Yeah, December. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, even from like my like my town, I don't think we're going to get anymore. Because all these block... These like winter blockbusters came out, all these Marvel movies and troll movies and shit. And I'm like, are you <laughs> fucking with me? Oh, yeah, all the Oscar bait movies. That just ruined everything out. for me getting some lower end, you know, horror films and stuff. So, yeah, fuck these guys. Fuck them. <laughs> so, I hope I get to see it before the year end show. <sighs> I'm sure I'll figure out a way to see it. But... yeah. 
I mean, that, that yeah. you know, like I said, my, my list is very short right now, but you know, thanks for adding a couple titles to that list. Anyways, I just feel like yeah, yeah. I need to, sure. up, I need to up some 2003s or 2023s. I can't get the year right. I can't do it. I'm, I'm still flustered because the bills <laughs> fucking blew it and they're not making the playoffs and I'm, I'm, I'm having a rough day. I'm having a rough one. Ouch. So yeah, I, I highly recommend Thanksgiving. Definitely try to check that out before the end of the year. Yeah, I finally I'm going to repeat a bold statement. Night. It's yeah. funny, man. I've been I'm going to repeat nothing. a bold statement. What's that? Uh, a statement that I made on Fresh Cuts when we reviewed it that got me a little bit of hate, but I don't care because it's my opinion. Uh, this is the first Eli Roth movie that I enjoyed. Oh, <laughs> The first yep. Eli I do Roth. not like Cabin Fever. I do not like Hostel. I do not like Green Inferno. Eli Roth, to me, has been one of the most overblown directors of the last 20 years. But I can finally say he made something that I really enjoyed. I'm not going to say it's his best movie, because I'm sure some people would argue that some of his earlier stuff was a little bit better. But for a fun turn off your brain slasher, yeah, Thanksgiving was awesome. I didn't like Green Inferno either. I, I stated yeah, I that like my that. opinion on that one quite uh, mm -hmm. highly on this on this he's, channel. I, he's pretty hit or miss with me. He is hit and miss. Like I like but, Cabin Fever though, but to be honest, man, Hostel when it came out, I did enjoy. But rewatch, I think when we did the um, the Hostel trilogy on this show, man, we realized like the dialogue in that movie is is really cringe, cringe worthy. Now you now. guys yeah. realize that. And it's like, holy. I still loved it. It's like, I still oh my, like, I like it was something I, because you didn't think about it back then. But like yeah. now with the way people's mentalities think and stuff like that, I'm like, man, it is the most homophobic shit. Like, I, mean, <laughs> yeah, it, I was like 14 when that movie came. Like, it is, movie but, it's, but it's not even like it's one or two comments in the film. It's just constantly through the film. Right. Yeah. And it's, you kept noticing it, noticing. It. I'm like, oh my God, dude, the, the dialogue is so cringe. Like, hostile as a film, I like the idea behind it. You know, like, I, I like what's going on and shit like that. It's, it's just the dialogue moments and stuff like that. But I mean, the, I, I think I've always, we, we defended Eli Roth on this channel quite often. And it's more not because of his films that he's done. I think Eli Roth is a good scholar of horror and like he's always got something, you know, decent to say yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. I like Eli Roth in that aspect. I think he's a better scholar of of horror films and in genre films than he is actually a filmmaker. But, you know, that's just my opinion. So I 100% no, agree, right? agree. I think I think his horror knowledge is is incredible and and he's a great ambassador for horror. I I think he's uh, he's done some really good stuff to get horror uh, out in the mainstream, you know, producing, executive producing as well, stuff like that. I I'll give the man his credit. I mean, it's not like he doesn't deserve to be in this genre. Not at all. It's just right. for his movies, especially his early movies, they were so overhyped. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if you guys even remember the advertising campaigns for like, you know, Cabin Fever and Hostel, but they you know, they, they were just overblowing those movies. And maybe it's my own, you know, dumb expectations that I bought into those trailers, which is probably one of the reasons why I don't watch trailers anymore. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, it just it, all, all the horror directors like Stephen King and Guillermo del Toro with quotes, you know, talking about this is the horror director horror fans have been waiting for and blah, blah, blah. And then hearing <laughs> the stories about Hostel and people passing out and puking during the screeners. And then I go to watch it and I practically fall asleep. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's it's a different of opinion, Dude, obviously. I, I mean, what's, I was what's like to one person when that came out and I'm like snuck into a movie theater. I thought that was like the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. It, at the time, it was the craziest thing I ever seen. I remember thing. it was like early. It was like an early wow. screening and there was a lot of people in the audience. And like when that guy gets at the end, people just started like cheering at the screen. It was so cool. Yeah, I, I mean the <laughs> marketing really worked on my generation. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we were the perfect age when movie. it came out. Yeah, what was that for Hostel? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah, you figure I would have been in like ninth grade when that came out, or something. I didn't. I yeah. didn't get to see that in this. I fuck. What, what year did Hostel come out again? Two thousand five. Two thousand five. Yeah. So yeah. I was actually, I was actually back here. I'm pretty sure we didn't get it at the cinema. That's why I didn't have that experience. So. No, in your cinema it wouldn't surprise me. No, no, yeah, because <laughs> even back in 2000, we only had the one at that point. So yeah, no, we probably didn't get it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it's kind of weird though because he's really been making a lot of stuff the last couple years. Like he, like the fir first like couple years of his career, he made like Cabin Fever, Hostel, and Hostel Two, and then took like a long ass like almost ten year break. 
and then now he's been working a lot. Uh, well, he did. Turnout. He did the remake of. Uh, he did what? Knock knock, right? Knock knock. Um, which Death Wish, House with the Clocks in the Walls, Finn, which was a documentary. Yeah. And Thanksgiving, and then he's doing the Borderlands movie too. Mm -hmm. Apparently, well, it's good to hear that Thanksgiving is actually pretty good because, uh, you know, I mean, it, it it honestly was one of the funniest fake trailers ever made and the fact that it's actually good what 20 something years after it came yeah. out or the trailer yeah. like i mean it's it's pretty impressive or 20 whatever they definitely is. deviated from like the vibe and feel of what the trailer was to right. like what we actually got yeah. right but the core concept of a thanksgiving slasher is still there and i actually i think carly liked it a bit more than me but uh wow. It it felt like a mix of like my bloody Valentine and Scream and I know what you did last summer like it, it felt it felt almost like similar to the '90s era slashers than the mm, '80s. Yeah. Hmm. I'm it kind of nostalgic was able to for reproduce. Those. Yeah, Thanksgiving was able to reproduce the uh, the the kind of slasher who done it uh sub genre from the mid 90s that you know scream kind of started and I, I i honestly thought they did it great um it, it's a fairly basic see it's funny because two movies came out in consecutive weeks it's a wonderful knife came out and then a week later thanksgiving came out mm -hmm. it's a wonderful knife actually has a fairly original concept that at least something that we really haven't seen in horror that much. Is, but the is that ironic? Garbage. Is that ironic because it's like based on It's a Wonderful Life? <laughs> right, right. To an extent, yeah. But at the same time, in the horror genre, that's mildly original. Whereas Thanksgiving right. is the most derivative storyline you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Literally, somebody is wronged on a, on a holiday, and then the next year on that holiday, they go on a killing spree. It's a concept that we've seen a hundred times, and we'll see it a hundred more times in the future. But the difference is, is that Thanksgiving's execution was just masterful. It was mm -hmm. so much fun. Uh, amazing kills. Uh, and I might be overhyping it for those who haven't seen it, and I hope I'm not. But for whatever it's worth, it is my favorite slasher of the year. So mm. it, it's so that good to will. see like a true sort of slasher film in, in the theater because we don't get yeah. as many as we used to. Right. So yeah, yeah I, I thought it was really fun. And honestly, like one of the things I was worried about going into it is the look of the killer. I thought it was going to be stupid or cheesy or, or you know silly but it actually works and feels pretty oh, he doesn't have like a turkey on his head or something it, like that it's something like that <laughs> but not that because i know how much i know how much you love the bowling bag killer man you know with yeah. the bowling bag on the head so you know yeah i, I <laughs> think i should <laughs> uh but yeah it's it was pretty fun um not I, it should come out on like disc or something before the end of the year probably well i mean the way shit comes out yeah. How fast like it comes out month, now, yeah. Month or yeah. two or VOD yeah, or something. I'm sure you'll be able to see it. Uh that, but, like yeah, I gotta get on the Oh, we got our boy Dave, man. I'm sure he'll figure out a way to to throw me a digital version of it. So. I've seen pre orders on stuff now, like for four Ks before they've like even hit theaters. Yeah, oh yeah. That's <laughs> just crazy, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ghostbusters. That's that's the other movie that was coming out at the end of the year. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, the new it, it's dropping. That, oh shit! I thought it was 2024. Oh, is it? Is it? I thought too. Oh, I thought fuck. it was 20, I thought, yeah, Okay, it was yeah. Was that, that's, that would seem kind of crazy that I like had heard nothing about that. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> yeah, I thought it was 24. The, the writers, fuck. <laughs> the writers and actors strike just ended, so they, right. they only just got back to work. See, I thought it had been done for a while. <laughs> My bad. Yeah. Well, yeah. I guess I got that to look forward to next year. That the the last one actually made my top ten that year. That was pretty crazy. Did it really? Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, like it was fun. I, I really enjoyed it too, man. I thought it I had a great it. vibe. And I, it, I'm man. not even a huge fan of the first two. Oh my god, dude! Stop saying that shit. You're so stupid. <laughs> I mean, I like them. I'm just not like I didn't grow up with them. Like I'm not nostalgic for. Well, them. no, it's Damn not even a nostalgia thing. They're, I mean, the first film. It doesn't matter. I, I feel like it's one of those films you could have saw way after the fact and still appreciate it for how good it is, man. It's a good. Yeah. Honestly, man, the effects in that film are still it's, super good. It's not. I'm not a big no. Bill Murray guy. Never have been. I like yeah, Bill Murray. I, but there's, but I like Bill everybody likes Bill Murray. Murray. There's so like many main characters, characters in that though. movie. Like Bill Murray, yeah, he's obviously one of the mains, but like there's a there's like, you know, almost six main characters in that movie. You yeah. Know, so. Yeah. 
There's lots of memorable people, but yeah, uh, yeah, it's good. Yep. I think the second one is creepy as hell. It's got some creepy. I like it. I think I might like the second one a little better. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Second one definitely ups the horror. Oh, it totally does. It totally does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I want to do, um, uh, or sorry, I, I got to start watching the, the 2023 movies. I didn't realize how close we're actually to recording that. (laughs) It's like, doesn't it feel like you've been waiting for the good ones to come out? Yeah. And you've just like, (laughs) I feel like that's been all, but I haven't been watching a lot either. I mean, still one of my favorite movies of the year is the first thing I watched, which was Candyland. Oh, fuck. I still need to watch that one too. That's another one I, I need to see. Shit. This is the first movie I watched in last January. I forgot about Candyland. Like yeah, that's another one. Did you see that one, Venom? You saw that before, Megan? Wow. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I saw Candyland. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. No, it's good. I agree. I'm not sure if it'll be top 10 for me, but it, it is damn good. Yeah. Megan um, filmed so long ago. Yeah. Oh, Megan was the like first. Megan. That's the first one I logged from 2023. It was like great. It was like great at the beginning yeah. of January kind of thing. Right yeah. Now, so. Um, January 2nd. Yeah. So one of the theatricals we didn't get this year that I, I saw, I think 17 or 18 at the cinema this year, one of them was infinity pool that we didn't get. And uh, so what are your, what are your thoughts on infinity pool from this year? Oh boy. Uh, time to make <laughs> some more enemies. Uh, I did not enjoy infinity pool at all. I thought Mia goth was one of the most annoying characters ever set to celluloid. Yeah, uh, I literally days. wanted to leave yeah. to the movie <laughs> and shrink like that. Wow, you know I I, I I easily get annoyed funny, with characters, man. and like I felt like I, I actually didn't get annoyed. With, I fucking loved Infinity Pool, man. Like, yeah, I, I think it's because I, I don't know. Like, uh, I, I know a lot of people watch the theatrical cut, and I'm sure it's not a whole lot different than the unrated version. I mean, there's obviously some stuff in the unrated version that was not. I could tell right away yeah. what was not in the theatrical cut for sure. Uh, I don't know if it's going to change your opinions. Probably not, but. um I just really enjoyed the idea of it. I didn't even think about how annoying like it didn't bother me at all. I just I, I thought really it was like annoying yeah. to the point where it was funny though. Like I liked when they were like chasing up the <laughs> when he was like talking in that really annoying voice. Like I was like laughing the whole time for some reason. Yeah. Are you a Mia Goth fan in general or is it just as movie? Honestly, like I don't like I'm not really like I, I don't dislike her, but I'm not, like I'm not in like the Mia like the Mia Goth hype train. Oh, dude, I think I she's, like she's great pro. as X an and actress. Pro. I think X she's a, good. I think she's a really good. I think I'm glad that like she's like dead, like that she does so much work in horror because I think she's like really good for a lot of these movies. I'm just like she's not someone like that's one of my favorites. I just yeah, think she's, I, I, I don't she's really get good the yeah, I, like I think she's great, but I don't like the the Dave Z level of love. Like I'm nowhere near that Ugh. no i, I, I mean i like prefer her that um that anna taylor joy girl yeah yeah i think it, anna taylor joy is way better yeah i'm i'm I mean, well, I'm, maybe, I'm, maybe, maybe not I'm way different better, but... i mean i think it's because i probably haven't seen her in as way much stuff better. as you guys have but uh but when it comes to x and pearl like those are two of my favorite movies of like the last like five years like i love those two movies so i i can't help but just have the love for mia goth and she's part of it right so mm-hmm. But I didn't really take that into consideration watching Infinity Pool. Like, I just love the idea of Infinity Pool, man. I just, I can't wait to rewatch it, too. Um, oh, I, mean, I love that concept. Brandon, Brandon yeah, Cronenberg, he has a miss for me, man. I, he's three for three for me, man. Like, mm-hmm. he's he's knocked it out the fucking frame for me <laughs> three times in a row, man. Andy Var, I loved it. Obsessed was my favorite film of a couple years ago. Infinity Pool is obviously making my top ten. I mean, I've said that many, many times, so... Yeah, knows I, didn't, I didn't love infinity pool but i did like it a lot and it will 100 percent be my top 10 yeah uh no it will <laughs> be my see bottom it. 10 <laughs> crazy yeah uh I, i'm not sure if you were asking me my opinion on Mia goth but yeah i i actively dislike her no. i don't like her very much i, I just i i don't know um i watch pearl and I think I, I watch it and I think that is the most basic bitch interpretation of an in, of someone who's insane, oh, who's clinically insane that I've ever now. seen in my fucking life. I mean, <laughs> it was literally color by numbers crazy. No you you want to see you want to see something that's a, a little bit more, especially if you're if you're a fan of that, um, the, the monologue that she goes through in that movie, mm-hmm. I would strongly table. recommend Nefarious. Yeah, exactly. 
Um, nefarious. If, if you haven't seen Nefarious, I would highly recommend that one. I feel I, like that I, I is thought a I was the only guy that movie. liked that movie. <laughs> a lot of people, a couple of people have movie. told me that I movie's would in like my it. top ten. Yeah, I like it a lot. I, I think actually. that movie is absolutely brilliant. Hey, I, th- I, I don't I, even I, know I, I could watch is. that conversation. Yeah, I could watch that conversation for hours. <laughs> it's basically just two guys in a fucking interrogation room. That sounds awesome. Yeah, it's barely a horror film, yeah, but it's <laughs> it's just so damn good. <laughs> so damn good. there's two guys in a room. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. I think Carly liked it too. Oh, so like two different people. I think one of them was James said that I would like that movie. Yeah, I gotta check that well, out. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're a fan of ki- of uh, you know kind of character, I think study like dialogue driven horror. Yeah, I think you'll dig it. I like the two guys in a room concept, and they never leave. I like it. It's <laughs> enough. On, it's enough for me. Yeah, that sounds interesting, man. Is, is, have you guys seen um, Venom? Have you seen the last or the, or the final interview? Is it kind of like that? Like where two people are kind of talking and, you know, the Fred Vogel film from a couple years back? Oh, yes, yes. Um, similar. Um, I would say Nefarious is head and shoulders better. But yeah, I, I would say kind of a similar concept. Yes. Nice. Nice. Yeah, actually, our, our homeboy, Dave, who's usually part of the show, he was that he actually he plays he has a part in that film in the in the final interview. Um, it cuts to like a That's he really- plays. Yeah, he. I didn't know that. That's cool. He cuts to a part. Uh, he plays a reporter. It cuts to like a, a part where he's doing a reporting scene and stuff like that, and he does that and shit like that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Well, I mean, Dave is really good friends Crazy. with Fred, right? So, but he actually has a part of that. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. It's cool. Sure. But I love that film. Like the dialogue is it's so intense and shit. It's crazy, man. I, I think yeah, I just Carly picked up the Blu-ray at Wasteland, and I meant to borrow it. And I still haven't. Oh, it's it's really good. It's really good. I was impressed with it. I mean, if you're familiar with his earlier work, I mean, this is like night and day different, you know? So nice. very, very interesting elevation of filmmaking for Fred. So try something different, but uh, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Um, nice. So anyways, yeah. So episode 246, 22 shots of movies and horror week four of Italian horror month. We got Massimo Pupilio. If I'm saying that Probably wrong because we say everyone's fucking name wrong here on the show. Um, I'm actually quite surprised we haven't got it's more. Lucky you got feedback. me here then. Well, it, 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 it's it's. I'm surprised we haven't got more feedback about how we pronounce everyone's Italian names wrong because who the fuck can pronounce how these names? Like it's it's ridiculous. But Massimo Papilio. Papilio. Um, Papilio. Yep. So yeah, I think I think that's right. Massimo Papilio. Uh, with um, <laughs> this is like so bizarre. I was thinking about this this morning, and I'm like. Fuck, is, is this ever happened where we've done a director spotlight before and, and all three, all three films, films from the same year? From the same year? Like, yeah, I, I was wondering think. about We've that. had two before, I think. I think we had two. Yeah. I don't think we had three in one year, though. So weird, man. So weird. So we got Terry On top of the fact that... On top of the fact that uh, his name doesn't appear as the director for any of these three films. <laughs> yeah, he uses, the, he uses a, a, a... What is it? A, Dude... An, I feel like alias. he was just working for a company and they just like were like, okay, you're going to do well, this one today. It, it's common for the those directors back in those days because they were trying to appeal to the, the you know, the um, North American, American market, market. So they would have these North American names and stuff like that. But it's funny because I think two of the names are the same. Then there's a different name. Like he was under so many different names, man. I mean, using an acting yeah. name or a, a gig name has gone back to the beginning of Hollywood, essentially, right. you know. Right. I mean, even Stephen King, like when he was when he was writing books, he started to, he had to write, put books under Richard Bachman, right? Because he yeah. was under contract for so many with Stephen King. Then he had he was writing so many novels that they under a different label. He had to use a different uh, acronym. And they're like, books. slow down, Steve. Dude, right. Too many four books. horror novels in a yeah, year. <laughs> too many. But I was like blown away by this. I'm like, all three of these movies are from 1965. What are the chances? Terror Creatures from the Grave, <laughs> Bloody Pit of Horror and Lady Morgan's Vengeance, which is the one I hadn't seen before. So that was kind of cool. So I, uh-huh. but yeah, 1965 was a, was a big year for, for Massimo Pupilio. <laughs> so it was pretty much his only year. <laughs> he yeah. did two, what? Two other films after that. <laughs> yeah. It's so weird, right? You do three in one well, year. He, that's I like read on his w- Wikipedia page that after he did those three films, they were, uh, a studio was contacting him to do another film. And they're like, yeah, the studio told me that I had to either get you or Mario Bava. So, and I guess that like pissed him off because he didn't want to be pigeonholed into a horror director, essentially. Oh, and right. <laughs> so he kind of got disenfranchised with 
the cinema world. Right, right. That makes sense. Um, so we've done pretty much top list discussions this entire month, except for last week, because of course we had Greg Immortus on, who's a first time guest. So we did five questions, but I thought it was interesting um, because we've reviewed a lot of Giallo's uh, the first couple weeks. And then the last couple weeks has been pretty much all horror films. So, mm -hmm. but and this one specifically happens to be in that kind of Italian goth uh, horror film, um, part of the sixties. Right. So, um, I don't know if this is really ranked. Maybe it is. I don't know, but the only list I could find was of course an IMDb list. And it says Italian goth horrors of the sixties. Um, it's not ranked by user ratings. I don't think so. I, they might be rated. I don't know. Maybe they were put in, but the number one film on here could be what they were thinking the number one film is but i thought it'd be kind of fun to go through here and just kind of see how many we've actually seen these are italian gothic films just from the 60s which kind of makes sense because they didn't really make a lot of gothic films once the 70s came in fact i don't really think there is really any from the 70s but um but we'll go so there's 36 on here we'll go from bottom to top so at number 36 is the third eye keep track of how many you guys have seen because this is kind of interesting Okay. Um, I, I know we've done reviews for a lot of these films that are on here, so that'll play into it. But uh, but the third eye actually just got review or released from Arrow Video, I believe. Uh, I just actually watched this one. Um, pretty decent film. It's got Franco Nero in it and stuff like that. Have, has anyone else seen this one? Nope. Nope. Uh, yeah, from '66. Yeah, I, think I see all this. Right. Right. Yeah, that's the one. I don't remember anything about it, but I, I remember the title. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I thought it was. I thought it was actually pretty decent. It's. It's. You know. It's like a very young. This is like pre Django, uh, Franco Nero kind of thing, right? So, um, mm -hmm. and number thirty five is a film called The Doll of Satan, aka La B La Bambola di Satana. I don't know if you guys ever watched my Italian twenty four hour video I did with Dylan, but that was a big joke on there. The La Bambola di Satana. It's it's an okay film and has some really funny fucking moments in it. Can't help but laugh. Um, definitely seen that one. Now, this is one I did not know anything about. Number 34 is The Murder Clinic. No nope. idea. Nope. From 1966. No idea. Never even heard of this one. It's got William Berger in it, though. So, But then again, nice. is there any films from the 60s and 70s that you've never... You, you've never... Like, there's always somebody that you recognize in, in an Italian film. Like, there's so many actors. Mm -hmm. Like, all these films tonight from Papulio, like the cast in them i've seen all these actors in 100 films <laughs> it's fucking just yeah. crazy man it's so crazy but so the murder clinic is one i have not seen uh and then number 33 is but you were dead from 1966 that's another one i actually don't know anything about it's crazy no never heard of that i haven't seen any of these damn movies yeah, so far a couple of directors yeah, I, don't I haven't even seen know. any either uh, number 32 is The Witch, and that's actually in the same box set as The Third Eye, released by Arrow Video, 1966. I actually, this is the one video or the one movie from the box that I have not seen yet. I actually have it sitting on my table. I was going to watch it before the end of the month, but. What was uh, the box set? Um, I believe that's the something gothic. Uh, Arrow Video was something gothic. I don't know. It, it was, uh, it was okay. all gothic films. Yeah. Something like that. Whatever it's called. Uh, it's from Domino. Damanini? So I recognize the name. I think he's on other films too. Um number 31, an angel for Satan. Uh, of course, with her with her homegirl Barbara Steele. I've seen that one before. I think um Severn released that one. Oh, yeah. Blu-ray? Yeah, that's a good film. I know what our movie? homeboy. What was uh, it called? An, an Angel for Satan. An Angel. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh I know our homeboy uh Tom, aka Horsball, is a big fan of that movie, which he's a huge fan of Barbara Steele in general. So Oh yeah, number Same. thirty is uh, She Beast from nineteen sixty six. That one has a lot of. I think I've seen that one. Oh yeah, that one's oh, got yeah, lot... many times. <laughs> it's got a lot of AKAs, man. That one's got a ton of different names. It's also got Barbara Steele in it too. I can't remember all the names for it, but I think I have that movie under like three different titles. It's ridiculous. <laughs> oh man, um, number twenty nine is Kill Baby Kill from uh, sixty six. Hey, of course, I've Mario Bava. <laughs> You've seen one, yeah. I'm still at zero. Yeah. Right one. Really? <laughs> really? I'm at five. Uh number twenty, this is the other one I was I had no idea. It's it's just straight Italian. It's La Cementa Tumba. No idea from nineteen sixty five. I'm sure no one's seen that one. No, nope. just nope. 
uh number uh, the 20 cement tomb yes is that what it's called cement tomb okay <laughs> right okay number yeah, 27 yeah, that's, the, that's the english title yep okay so i don't know that one uh number 27 is lady morgan's vengeance which we will be talking ah, about later one. on in the show from 1965 <laughs> JP got one. <laughs> we just talked about that another film from 1965 is called libido from 1960 or just said that um this is one i actually have sitting on my on my poker table ready to watch too i haven't seen this one it was another film release from severin yeah severin release libido i've heard this one's really good has anyone else seen it nope no i've heard of it though no okay yeah i've heard really good things about it actually so it was kind of a gem to get released um number 25 also from 65 terror creatures from the grave we'll be talking about that one in a minute Ooh. uh number 24 is bloody pit of horror <laughs> three <Go. I'm laughs> killing it <laughs> that's fucking hilarious um number 23 is nightmare castle of course barbara steals in that one also yeah uh, that's i've on the seen that same, one the same three pack that severin released with nightmare castle terror creatures from the grave and there's something else on there too but um number 22 is oh shit i don't know what the fuck this is uh la jena de Londra. no hmm. don't know I think that. that's stalker in the laundry room <laughs> a serial killer called the hyena <laughs> is finally caught and eventually hanged okay uh number 21 the monster of the opera that is released in that macaw box set from severin i just recently watched that one i think it was my first watch for italian horror month and i, I actually didn't really enjoy it i thought it was pretty bad actually to be honest but uh, that was from Rento uh, Poselli. We we did a director spotlight on him. What a couple years back, GP uh, Renato. Yeah, uh, yeah, Poselli. yeah. That was a little while ago. I think yeah. might might have been Jeremy Pick. Yeah, uh, that, yeah, that was a decent show. But um, yeah, number twenty, Crypt of the Vampire with uh, Christopher Lee. That was released in I think the Christopher yep. Lee Severn box set volume one. That was a pretty decent film. Uh, the Castle Living Dead from sixty four, also with Christopher Lee in the same box set. That's another pretty good film, decent one. Um, this is it, Castle of Blood from 1964. Now, this is a movie I really don't understand why it doesn't have a better release. It's um, directed by Antonio Margheriti, co-directed by Sergio Corbucci, starring Barbara what? Steele. Like, this is ridiculous, and this movie that's doesn't like, really have a that great release. That sounds like a cult movie, like a cult movie burrito or something right like three major major players in italian cinema margaretti corbucci and steel it doesn't really have a great release it's crazy <laughs> but um anyways good film though uh number 17 long hair of death i believe that we reviewed this during the antonio margaretti director spotlight yeah yeah so again with barbara Steele. um number 16 challenge the devil Again, Christopher Lee, same box set from Severin. That's a fun one. Um, this one, fuck, I, I don't know if I've seen this one or not. It seems familiar, but Tomb of Torture from 1963. Antonio uh, Bacari or something like that. I don't know. Have you seen that one, Venom? Um, Does not sound familiar. Yeah, I don't know. The name, I don't know if I've seen that one. Uh, number 14, this is straight Italian. Uh, Il Domenio. 1963 don't know that one. Oh, i have that one it's in the haunts box set i haven't watched it yet oh is it in the haunts box okay so i haven't yeah. watched that one okay so i do own that one then i actually did want to watch by the end of this month but i kind of got burnt down in italian cinema month <laughs> is, it under, is it under that title it's under uh the demon oh, okay that makes sense i was like it has to okay that makes sense the demon. Yeah. okay number 13 the blancheville monster uh that's an alberto di martino film we rev did we review that one I don't think so, unless it's under a different title. No, okay, okay. But anyways, I watched it before. Uh, 1963, uh, The Ghost. Uh, that's a Ricardo Freda film starring Barbara Steele from 1963. That's a cool film, actually. Um, and then we got number 11, which is Horror Castle from 1963. That's uh, Antonio Margretti. That Actually, this yep. is the one I was thinking. It doesn't really have the greatest release, I don't think. But number 10, Black Sabbath, Mario Bava um number nine yeah. the whip in the body again mario baba with christopher mm -hmm. lee um number eight curse of the blood ghouls from 1962 i don't know that one mm -hmm. at least i don't think i no, do me neither number seven the horrible dr hitchcock from 1962 that's ricardo freda also that's a cool one i like that movie now this is a fun one man werewolf in a girl's uh, dormitory 1961 have you seen this one venom i think so yeah that sounds really familiar 
Yeah, I think Severin I put this one uh, on a few years back, and it's it's a good one, man. I think it was Severin. Yeah. It's another Barbara, right? There's another Barbara in that movie. Uh, Barbara Lass, yeah. Not Steel or Nessie. Lass, Barbara there we go. Yeah. Barbara Lass, yeah. I did see that one. Yep. It's a good film, man. I actually really enjoyed that one. I, I think I just watched it a few months back, actually. Uh, number five, The Playgirls and the Vampire. No idea. <laughs> that one, that, it's crazy. Top five, don't even know it. Number four, Atomic Age Vampire from 1960. Also don't know. Crazy. Yeah. Ah, uh, I know that one. All right. Uh number three, the vampire and the ballerina. We of course reviewed that on the Renato uh mm-hmm. Selly uh director's spotlight. Um number two, Mill of the Stone Woman from 1960. That's a good film. Yep. Arrow dropped a real nice edition, that one. Um, and of course, number one is Mario Bava's Black Sabbath. So yeah. Um, so I did nine. Maybe eight. Ah, beachy BT. fuck. Yeah, you got me on some of the ones that you guys. You probably I didn't <laughs> see a lot of the early ones you guys reviewed. I probably saw a couple of Baba ones you didn't. <laughs> I watched exactly half. I got eighteen of them. How many did you get, Mids? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fucker told us to count, and he Who's didn't got to be it. 25, 25, <laughs> 25 out of thirty-six. You're a machine. Yeah. Yeah, 25 out of 36. And it, it was funny. There was a handful of films in there I'd never even heard of. Like yeah. <laughs> some of the ones I didn't see, I'd never even heard of. That's insane. And I have a couple actually sitting in my watch pile to watch. Like the the Witch, that was one of them. And Libido, is, uh, that one's sitting there too. So, But yeah. But the 60s gothic horror films, yeah. Always fun stuff. It's kind of funny that all three films that, uh, that we're reviewing today were actually in that list. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Stack my count up. I guess. I mean, I, I guess it's a short list. I have no idea because I guess once the mid sixties kind of happened, that's when the explosion of uh, Giallo happened. So they're like fuck gothic films. These but, are stupid. Yeah. So make the movies with the tits. But you do notice, man. Most of those movies are from like the first half of the sixties, pretty much. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. Um, I guess. That's all I got for that. Um, anything else intro wise? JP? No. All right. Well, I guess let's get into this uh, director spotlight, this Massimo Pupilio. Uh, we will return here in a couple minutes with um, the first review Terror Creatures from the Grave. See you in a minute. And now, our feature presentation. Creatures from the Grave. All right, so getting into the featured reviews here on episode 246, week four of Italian Horror Month. We got Massimo Pupilio. We're going to take it all the way back to 1965 three times in this episode. Um, First film called Terror Creatures from the Grave. Yes, starring the homegirl, Barbara Steele. I love me so Barbara Steele. Quick little synopsis here. A lawyer arrives at a castle to fix the estate of a recently deceased owner. The owner's wife and daughter reveal that his spirit is wandering around the castle with evil intentions. All right. So thoughts on terror creatures from the grave. Um, so no one, no one had seen this film before. No, I've never seen any of these. I never heard of any of these. Okay. It's probably why I didn't want to do the show. Uh, this was the only. Oh yeah, no! This was, I was the only uh, first time watch for me. I was just trying to be courteous. <laughs> <laughs> it's all just fucking with you. <laughs> ah, fuck terror creatures. Okay, Venom. What are your thoughts on terror creatures from the grave? Uh good movie. Terrible fucking title. I yeah. hate this title. <laughs> this title. I, I, I don't understand. Why would they not keep the? Italian title. The Italian title is gorgeous and it makes fucking perfect sense. What's the Italian? Uh, the title? Italian title. The Italian title is chi- uh, uh, Cinque Tumbe per un Medium, which translates yeah, to five tombs for the medium. 
Five tombs for the medium. That's that makes a great way more title. sense. <laughs> yeah, Terror Creatures exactly. from the Grave is got to yeah. be got to be the most misleading title ever. I thought this was going to be some schlocky yep. monster bullshit, especially when the whole movie is <laughs> essentially just a revenge film. Yeah, right? it's like this is like, like this movie has a plot. I, I mean, like, they do, cinematography. They do throw in the fact that they, they, you know they talk about like how you know they bring up the whole plague the the plague thing and then they have like you know the severed hands they, they they talk about like you know why they were buried where they were consecrated ground so their souls you know roam this for eternity blah 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 but like it has nothing to do with the core narrative to to what's actually going on in the film it really doesn't it's it's simply a fucking revenge film <laughs> it's like mm-hmm. but this so movie's cra- spooky this movie's crazy flawed yeah. narrative wise oh, yeah. narrative wise yeah. because <laughs> like read from the opening Read from the opening scene in the film where our lawyer gets the letter. <laughs> you know what I mean? He gets the letter mm-hmm. and then he goes to the estate and he sees Barbara Steele. And then he, and then, he, you know, he shockingly finds out that like, you know, um, he didn't just die. He actually died almost a year to the day. But like, I mean, when you, when you, you take this part of the narrative and you, you play it into the reveal in the end of the film. It's utterly ridiculous. It makes the whole movie actually kind of stupid. Hmm. Right? Because who's responsible for the death? Yeah, I mean... The deaths? The early deaths, you mean? Or no, the death of the main character? The death of the main character. Geronimus. Geronimus. Okay, gotcha. Geronimus. So, so apparently the letter is sent from Geronimus, which, you know, he's shocked. <laughs> he's shocked by this this you know this uh this revelation but when we get the discovery at the end of the film and you think back to the beginning of the film you're like what the fuck like the first time i watched this movie i'm like did i miss something i'm like why why would they be why would he be shocked at this i'm like if you possibly had something to do with this i mean the whole narrative you know the way it plays out the the reason why all these players all these people are dying throughout the film it's revealed to why they are dying right yeah so why would he be shocked at this in the beginning it's a super flawed narrative it's a super flawed narrative i mean well because he was wasn't he one of the five he was one of the five so he should be shocked that they got that letter yeah because the dude's dead so why why would he he get a letter from geronimus no but he knows he's dead because he may or may not have been right so if you got a letter from a dead person you'd probably be pretty surprised yeah (laughs) right but but no but he's acting like he but originally in the beginning of the film he the way they perceive it is that he had just died a couple days before but then the letter but then Barbara Steele's character reveals that her husband died a year ago to the audience. And then he's like, oh, mm-hmm. it was a year ago. But he would know that given what the reveal is in the end of the film. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? That. Right? The reaction in the beginning of the film to he would know when he fucking died. He was <laughs> selling it. Because there's a whole plot was, behind this thing. There's a whole plot. He was there's selling, a, it. selling it to, to, to the himself. <laughs> to the audience. It's, 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 yeah, it's the by the, the reveal. Unreliable the reveal, narrator. Genius. By the reveal, you're like, oh my God, that doesn't make any fucking sense because they literally show you what happens to Geronimo in the end of the film. Geronimo. <laughs> Geronimo. <laughs> Geronimo. <laughs> Whatever. You know what I mean? But anyways, the point is, it's so like the first time I watched this movie a few years back, I was like, did I miss something? I'm like, no, I didn't. I told and then I rewatched it. And I was like, no, I did not miss anything. <laughs> it's just a fucking stupid plot hole. But to be honest, man, I actually really like this movie. I think it's a fun one. I, I agree. Venom, the, the title is stupid. Terror Creatures from the Grave. And they only use that title because they base it on, you know, the whole plague thing. And they, they throw in all that plague talk and stuff like that, which is kind of cool that, he, you know, um what what what's the guy's name? I keep calling him Geronimo. Ger- Geronimus. 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 Geronimus Half. Which Geronimus is kind of a Half. cool his character is actually kind of cool. He's the most interesting character of the film, and we don't even really know Geronimus because you know he obviously is dead. And if I have a kid, I'm naming him Geronimus. I think he's an interesting <laughs> character because he was able to kind of like, you know, do some almost magic shit. You know, I, I I think that's really cool. Yeah, but. I, what they call it in the film, like he was a something of the an occultist. 
yeah. an occultist and he he figured out ways to kind of like you utilize this and bring these things back and stuff and i thought that was really cool but but one thing i did notice when i watched this film uh when the seven blu-ray came out a few years ago was i couldn't fucking help but notice when they play the recording in this film it is so evil dead this movie is the original evil dead essentially that voiceover and the recording is so evil dead and i couldn't help but like sam raimi obviously took a little bit of fucking influence from this movie because when he's talking about you know like you know all the all the plague stuff and these victims and you know uh buried in the garden like it the voiceover just reminds me of of the, of the evil dead and then what's happening people are dying off you know they're getting picked off by these spirits blah 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 and i just feel like this movie is a pre precursor to the evil dead hands and no one thought of the evil dead when they're watching this when they heard those voiceovers on the on the record i, I want to say tape but it wasn't actually a tape i'm not you sure you know what this movie kind of felt like to me um like if i didn't know better i would have felt like i was watching like a I felt like I was watching like a forties universal haunted house movie. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of these ones sort of, uh, all kind of like, like from this era, there's a lot of them that feel like that. Yeah. Um, I kind of, I kind of like the feeling of it. I, I honestly like this movie a lot too. Um, I think my appreciation might be a little bit inflated because I like, I did not care for the movie I watched before this. So I was like, this was like, um, like a right. breath of fresh air and i like this like especially since it came out in the same year and you're, you're yeah like, i watched bloody oh. pit too and i was like i was like this is gonna be a ride <laughs> yeah and then like when i saw the title this too ah oh, terror creatures from the gray isn't it, it like crazy like schlocky. how three of these movies came out in the same year and they're so aesthetically different yeah, yeah. it looks like so i different. would think he had more control over like the other two because they do like share obviously like the setting wise they share more similarities but he's like really he's he's good with like creating some of these like shadowy shots and some of the way like storm way storm yeah I'll yeah this honest. one this one is like you know it's kind of like your straight up kind of like almost like supernatural kind of horror film kind of deal yeah um the second one is like it's one of those movies where he tried to make a good movie and he just failed on all fucking aspects and then the third one is like this supernatural um god i think i think the cinematography in the third film was really good like I'm, i, I yeah. think that i think that one's really it's shot really well you know it's got your kind of typical storyline and stuff like that but i think it's kind of interesting like narrative wise like how many twists and turns that one actually has in that mo movie it's it's kind of crazy like it goes kind of bad shit in the last like half an hour of that one but but yeah don't no this one this is a, this I thought the the mummified hands was like kind of a nice touch yeah. for the yeah backstory yeah. of the play having Barbara Steele on this too it kind of like it almost kind of like felt like welcoming like in the same way like in like some old haunted house movie you would have had like Karloff or like Lugosi it's funny watching these movies that from 1965 that are period pieces because when we watch them in 2023 it feels like a period piece but that you're watching a period piece be a period piece because this movie <laughs> takes place in 1910. It's so weird. It's so strange. But I think it's like, you know, like costume wise, aesthetically and stuff like I think it does a pretty good job of capturing that time period and stuff. And I love the black and white uh, cinema I'm, I, or cinematography. I, I feel like the bloody pit of horror would not been saved by black and white at all. Uh, but we'll get to that one. <laughs> we'll, we'll save all of our, 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 our opinions for bloody pit of horror when we get to it. But I think the black and white uh, cinematography in this one works really well. And, and I'm curious on why um, Pupilio had a, two black and white films in the same year and then one color like i wonder what the idea behind that was maybe because he wanted to showcase the colors of blood i have no idea it might Honestly, have just been a cost thing yeah. it could have been Honestly, a cost thing too i feel like he was work he was contracted to work for like some studio and they just said all right you're gonna go make this movie and then like he finished this project like all right you're gonna go do this one right and, like he just it was maybe luck of the draw yeah that's why i would have thought maybe like, it's a type of film though too because terror creatures and lady mar i feel like those movies just they're kind of they're kind of fit for a black and white cinematography yeah too. they probably had already have like pre basically pre-written like okay we're gonna make these like haunted house gothic movies in black and white like we're gonna do like oh we're gonna do color on this one we're gonna put this guy in this like pink suit right <laughs> well the two black and white movies feel like a more serious attempt at horror whereas Bloody yeah, Pit i would have i would have thought like, they did know, these like but that's the way it appears after like, you right, watch them move this around a little bit use the same thing 
and it's so true it's like the way you perceive it though too right because you take this one it seems more serious you take the third one it seems more serious and you take the second one it's like like the funny thing about bloody pit is that like he legit was trying to make a good movie you know 1965 they weren't making these low budget 2022 movies where they're like oh we're gonna make a shitty movie and people are gonna like it because it's shitty it's maybe not, just not the it, case it, if it was in last in production maybe he didn't care by then yeah maybe he's like fuck these guys because i told back. you it, what what he said about you know being pissed off he was getting pigeonholed into horror right so maybe right <laughs> maybe he just tried his heart out and then he just failed too so but getting getting back to the whole <clears throat> terror creatures from from the grave like you know evil dead connection did you guys not think of that because i thought of this the first time i watched it too like what i think it's because like when you hear recordings you know basically kind of from the grave you know kind of thing like i i instantly think of the evil dead and you know everything after the evil dead i always reference you know that well that feels very evil dead but then when you watch a movie like terror creature from the grave that came out in 1965 which you know predates you know the evil dead by in theory what it, it, what what's the copyright on 81 so 16 years i guess um it just feels like you know there's some direct influence taken from shit like that yeah i you know what um like i can't help i but didn't notice, think like, of it at the time but like thinking back on it i could see where you're coming from with that it's weird because there was another movie i don't remember what the movie is that i watched recently but there was also a like a tape recording in there it might have been something from 2011 but i did think of evil dead in that one mm -hmm. <laughs> right so it's weird but it's just the way he's talking too it's it almost yeah. sounds like the same type of voice that's coming from the evil dead it's like it's like this doctor you know it's like talking about these experiments but he's in this version he's talking about the plague and and like what he was doing with this and how he was going about it and so i'm like oh my god it's, it's like the fucking evil dead it's crazy it, it, like to me it's just straight up and i'm not saying for the listeners out there like oh we're just thinking that Raimi's ripping off fucking you know fucking massimo pupilio i'm like no there's always there there's you know every director out there every writer and stuff always has their influence and things like well, that hell, there's a there's another what's that one movie from that evil dead is like clearly inspired I mean, it's by. like honestly you can, go as, put it out? you can even go as far back to like agatha christie novels where it was like put this on put this on the tape recorder and right. you're all right. so like that's like that happens in um uh what's 10 little um or and then there were none that's been like remade a million times in italian did you yep. yeah 10 yeah mm -hmm. exactly. what, what's the movie that criterion put out that evil dead is kind of like um come on oh that predates the evil dead yeah the predates the evil dead yeah everybody knows that movie uh oh right right i don't know what you're talking about well, it's like a direct like literally it's like so similar why am I blinking on this? This is this is my moment. Tyler, you're literally the <laughs> No, I know I know what you're talking about. I'm having a fucking brain fart too. I know exactly. I'm, we've even talked about it on the show before. Um Is it Japanese? Damn. Oh. It's very like low budgety feeling. Um Oh my god, someone look that up right now. That's gonna bug the shit out of me. I don't know. Why am I Dude. all right? I'm gonna go look it up now. Now you're okay. killing me. Okay, so you know, around well, about year. Hold on, I got, I, I got the criterion. Equinox. Oh, oh Equinox! Oh, Equinox! Okay, there yes. you go. Yes, Equinox. Hundred percent. Hey, all right, because that has a that has a criterion DVD. So that's before my time. Well, that's you're always been said. You're, you're you're a failure. I think yeah, you're I right. think Ramey actually <laughs> even mentions Equinox, right? Like it was yeah, a draft. Yeah, but I've I never heard forgot Ramey. that was a criterion. I've never heard Raimi ever reference Terror Creatures from the Grave before, but I believe that I might have looked back into it a few years back or whatever, and I'm pretty fucking sure even Stephen King referenced this movie as a sighting for Sam Raimi's Evil Dead. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. That I'm sounds wrong. I'm pretty sure just someone <laughs> someone google that right now did stephen king say anything about terror creatures from the grave being potentially an influence for sam raimi's evil dead somebody look it up right now all right i'm gonna type in stephen king terror Creatures. i'm positive he said something about this movie being possibly where would that I mean, the connection up in conversation but at? the connections is so obvious though like it's like venom you got you you have to admit it though right 
After you mention it, yeah, uh, I definitely see it. I did not see it. <laughs> I, I just pictured him saying no. no. <laughs> oh, that would have been fine too. But I feel like it's just it's no, one no, of those. No. But I, I, I'm positive I read that one time. I don't know. I read a lot of shit and I forget a lot of things though too. But I'm pretty sure. I don't Stephen see King... anything. But okay. <laughs> Yeah, Anyways, from that search. Um, but yeah, no, I thought this movie was pretty pretty decent. Um, I, I'm a I'm a sucker for like big castles and and you know the, these type of gothic yeah. flicks. They work pretty well for me. Yeah, that's why I'm a huge Hammer horror fan as well. I, I love right. gothic horror big time. So um, yeah, very the great, easy to watch. Uh, Oh, absolutely. And, uh, you yeah. know, Italy and the UK definitely don't corner the market. I mean, Spain had a lot of great gothic horror films. Um, what's the other country I'm thinking of? Actually, I, I can think of a couple from Finland, too, from like the early 60s. Uh, the titles escape me right now, but I know I've seen a couple. So, yeah. I know that there's a lot of like castles and shit in Romania and a lot of people filmed in Romania for that stuff. Especially full man. Yep. There you go. Nice. Um, what else about this one? Uh, let's see here. Oh, it's bugging the oh, shit. Uh, here's something. Man, I gotta uh, say. Scoozy, <laughs> <laughs> scoozy. Scoozy. Me scoozy. Me scoozy. <laughs> Shit, I'm trying to find the Stephen King that's just bugging the fuck out. Oh, shut I, up. That I, didn't I, happen. You, you dreamt it, bro. No, no, dude. I swear I read it somewhere. Um, Venom. Yeah, I Googled uh, you, Stephen. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say. Oh, I just Googled and... Stephen King quote, and it didn't come up. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I Googled uh, Stephen King and fight um, to where terror creatures. And come you up. mentioned when we weren't like recording we weren't rolling with it uh that there's two cuts of this movie right yeah yeah i actually went ahead and watched both of them because i just wanted to see the differences and it's really two specific scenes um that are different in the italian version um you get the scene where the where they receive the letter right at the beginning of the movie after the cold open um you know the two whatever they are lawyers um you know receive the letter that is not in the american version uh they, they cut that out completely they literally go from the cold open right to the castle so they basically skip that whole thing and then in the american version there is a different suicide for mr simmel or sinnel whatever his name was um you know the old guy in the wheelchair in the italian version he hangs himself which looks fucking terrible because it's an impossibility that he would be able to hang himself that way but <laughs> yeah that was i pretty, shouldn't be i was, yeah. ju I was yeah. just gonna say that wouldn't it be impossible plus actually one of the coolest and actually things i wanted to mention about this movie was that scene was actually quite shocking because when he gets those knives in the stomach and shit the gore that you get to see yeah in this version exactly. is fucking yeah. crazy for 1965 like who would have ever thought you would see that shit from like they never used to show shit like that it's crazy and i'm pretty no, fucking not. sure i mean and i'm not in, got, not in like gothic movies like not this. in 1965 gothic movies like you barely ever saw gore no, like yeah. that but like yeah. and like b between that scene and i'm pretty fucking sure you get to see uh barbara Steele's nipples in this movie too in the in the bathtub yes. i'm pretty i'm pretty sure her nipples very are present and so yeah. i'm like damn so there's two very notable things about this movie. yeah i did read that there is a nudity difference between the cuts okay so they, they definitely show some boobies there and but the gore i was shocked by that and i actually like some of the kill scenes man i like when the um uh what is it it's not yeah, the doctor is great like the 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 acid drip on the dude's face and stuff like that looks pretty yeah. gnarly and shit and, that was kind of gnarly yeah yeah, yeah. man there, there's there's kind of like some a couple shocking moments in this film with uh with death scenes and gore and stuff i'm like wow but am i am i dreaming or does one of these films have like a pretty pretty rad dummy death um yeah the third, a couple of them the did actually one <laughs> there's a okay. few you're scenes where there's potential the, to have the, the funniest scene the <laughs> or the the lady vengeance one whatever it is. the, the lady morgan vengeance uh, has potential yeah. to have the funniest one ever when the guy gets windmilled over the fucking castle top okay that's what i was thinking yeah <laughs> that that is obviously a fucking dummy that goes flying out there dude it's the best the ground, yeah. but they don't show it hit the ground and i'm like oh dude but it's clearly a dummy 
I love oh, it. I yeah. love Same thing in Bloody Pit. so much. It's so yeah. fucking funny. In Bloody Pit, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, we get one in Bloody Pit, too. Yep. Oh, God. I get, man, we should do a whole episode of just dummy deaths. Dude, just top, 10, d- top 10 <laughs> dummy deaths. <laughs> it's my favorite thing All the way the back world. to Frankenstein. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, a dummy death at the end. We talked about this a couple weeks ago, but, ser- but like a dummy death at the end of Terror Train makes that movie completely watchable. <laughs> it does. It I does, man. Either one. Like, oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. But there's a dummy death at the end. So no, that's like, that's a great example of a film that's kind of a slug to get through, and then the dummy death happens. You're like, yeah, I kind of like Terror Train after. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> the worse the dummy death is, the, the the worse the dummy looks, the better the dummy death. Right. Isn't the longer they show the dummy. <laughs> 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 There's a really good dummy death in that movie Images that Robert Altman did from 1972 where the, they showed the dummy for like a full 10, mis- 10 Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> I think my favorite dummy death is still at the end of House. Just because you House. actually see the body hit the rocks and you see the head kind of busting. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, like, uh, there's one in... Um... Oh, the one with the sparks, the Fauci's oh, uh, "Don't torture duck." Oh, don't torture duck! Oh yeah. my god, dude, that one is so ridiculous. I still, oh man, dude, Nightmare, Nightmare City has one of the best ones at the end. That when yeah. the, the dummy's literally hitting like all the bars as it's going down, and it's like that's like the just, best part. Like you know, it's a a really movie. underrated dummy death is um uh, the one that was in a uh, cat and nine tails, like in front of the oh, train. Yeah. Oh, I just yeah. watched that. Yeah. <laughs> that is a good one. I, just I forgot that. about that. No one ever mentions that. It. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> um, okay, so uh terror creatures from the grave. Dude, you know what's so funny about this movie, man? Like it has the most western spaghetti western feel by the end of the film when like the song you know, like in spaghetti western, Tyler knows this though. Yeah, I know you're a fan. Like when like yeah, like when like all the villains show up at the end. The no, when the song thing. when when the song plays and it starts telling you things about the film and stuff like that. Like it'll oh, have like when I watched the other night. Oh my god, the so, whole movie it did it, and it was so this funny. one. In the lyrics in the song that plays it, it feels like you're watching a spaghetti, a spaghetti western. It starts like telling you things about the film. Yeah. <laughs> what was it? Oh, Kioma so with, uh, with what's his name with Franco Nero. I watched that like last weekend, and yeah. the whole movie, the score of the movie is just some chick singing what's happening in the movie. Right. <laughs> that was a big thing back in those days, man. It was like a, it was like part of the narrative, man. And so, so yeah, it's so good. It's so good. It's it's like the musical way of just narrating the film. <laughs> what was that song that the girl sings that was like something about it's like her her grandfather used to sing it to her or something in this movie? Hmm. You don't remember? Oh, no. the the um I, <clears throat> the daughter that's like the same age as Barbara Steele, who's like her stepmom. Yeah. Yeah. That's fucking weird. <laughs> it's not one of those things back in the day that always happens. Like, you know, the young person marries the old doctor and then they have a daughter that's possibly the same age or even older than you. It's, like, it's so awkward. Hey, my stepdad's only 10 years older than me. Really? <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, my mother did the exact same thing. Well, no, my mother did the opposite. She married a younger guy. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. My, that's crazy. My buddy has a stepdaughter who's like six years younger than him. My God, that's my so my weird. uncle who my uncle who passed away this couple months ago. He was w- like three months older than me. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. That's crazy, man. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, overall, man, I actually really enjoy this one, man. I think I think it's a decent film. Um, it, it's got shocking gore. Uh, the music is what it is. It's it's not great. I mean, by the end of it, when they're you know when they're quoting the film that that's pretty damn fucking funny to me but um it's kind of a standard thing it's like more of just straight revenge film but i like it man i like terror creatures yeah. from the grave i think it's a it's i think it's a fun one yeah it's pretty good i like five tombs from the medium better <laughs> yeah right <laughs> that's a way better name god that's i mean a better I, name. I definitely will say you know this movie had some great atmosphere beautiful set design i actually i, I actually really really like the castle I do wish that the movie would have leaned into the undead angle. Yeah, more, I agree with you with yeah. that. They kind of 
they, they gave us all this information about the plague spreaders mm. and all the injustices that they had to go through. But then when they finally do rise, we don't get to see them. And that's a little see, disappointing. Now, maybe for 1965, it's not disappointing, but you expect to not see them, but it would have been cool if we did. I feel like that would have been the coolest yeah. part about the revenge. If he had been able to like rise the plaguers and, you know, use yeah. them to do the revenge, that would have been yeah. the coolest part. Yeah. Because I feel like that's kind of where it was going because that was where all of his experiments and all the studies were going from. But mm -hmm. it's just, yeah. it doesn't go that angle, which is kind of disappointing. I, I, I get it though. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And when I say that yeah. you, you, I mean, like for 1965, you don't expect to see them because they, ne they barely ever pay yeah. off in the, the 60s. In no, general true. cinema, you ex like today you would expect to see that. <laughs> but like for a slow burn yeah. film, man, it, like, I mean, it I, has decent effects and stuff, like those hands yeah. that are moving and shit. And like it's got, you know, I like you know, the hands. Gores, like one of my favorite parts. Cause there's, just, there's, yeah. like you said, there's some cool set designs, like with the, with the cemetery and, you know, there's a lot of great atmosphere and stuff. Like yeah. there's a lot of effort put into this movie for such a low budget type film that probably just kind of, kind of, it almost felt like he was, you know, overproduced for mm -hmm. the budget. You know what I mean? like they they did a good job yeah. with what they had for it and stuff like that and I, I feel like it just turned out really well i read this funny blip about uh um working with barbara Steele on this film and apparently she was being such a fucking bitch on the on the set and yeah. he had to oh. scream at her. he had to fucking scream at her um the first couple of days are on the set and stuff <laughs> and then it put her back in line and then you know she was easy to work with after that and stuff but she was like oh you know i'm too good for this type of shit and stuff i'm like really that's crazy because she was a vet at the yeah. time like, i mean she I, was famous for being in mario bava films and like you know she had her she you know she had her chops man she was know? in fellini movies yeah. right so yeah i've i've heard from i've heard multiple stories about barbara Steele being difficult i i think she kind of disliked being pigeonholed into yeah. horror roles right like, um, i was in you know, the same. some people some people do then some people embrace it just depends yep. the kind of person yeah, you are yeah. what your goals are yeah, and yeah. shit but yeah that it, it, it you hate to see it when it happens for people when it happens to people that don't want it to happen you know you kind of feel bad for people who wanted to get outside the genre but just get stuck in there but mm -hmm. I also like people. <laughs> I like people who are like to are just happy doing, you know, acting in general, whatever it comes. I mean, absolutely. The horror genre served her well. I mean, people are going to be talking about Barbara Steele for generations, whereas, yeah. you know, Yahoo serious. No one's talking about him anymore. You know what I mean? So the fact that a, a dipshit like that, uh, you know, was in, was in um, big release Hollywood theatrical releases yet, Barbara Steele, you know, who's basically a scream queen, one of the original scream scream queens, uh, she's going to be remembered for generations. Um, and like yeah. I said, I mean, it sucks when they feel like they're being pigeonholed, but it's like, look, you're working, yeah. right? You're paying right, your bills, right. you're working, you're getting your name out there, you're getting more notoriety, blah blah blah. It's like, what is bad about that? And sometimes, it, just and you know, sometimes by the end of it, maybe what in the moment you're not getting you know, the recognition, but like you just said, for generations to come, you know, people are going to be a, a fan and talk about you and stuff like that. And so a lot of regular actors who just never make it to like the super top, top, they're kind of forgotten a little bit. Yep. Oh, absolutely. And, and That's part of the reason I'm, I'm such a huge fan of people like Jamie Lee Curtis and Robert England. You know, they, they embrace their horror roots and they're happy. They love going to cons and talking to fans and they understand that horror made them the names that they are now. And they show Alyssa that respect is like to horror. One of the coolest people yes. because she embodies exactly. that. It, it's funny because we just oh. talked about this with Jamie Lee Curtis where there was a time where she didn't really do that and yeah I think yeah was, at first i think it was then, partly oh, due yeah. to the ignorance well it was i think it was partly in due to the ignorance of her not really understanding the whole con well, she i mean thing. she even admits that yeah she the, didn't understand the, like the, the scenes thing she didn't yeah. she didn't get it and then and when she got it she was like okay well, that's cool yeah money is a big part of it too because you know right around the late 80s early 90s big studios were throwing jamie lee curtis money to be in stuff like trading places and <laughs> um whatever that arnold schwartz uh true lies stuff yeah. like that so she's yeah. she's making buku money for those movies and i think when young actors you know 
get out of like the horror genre and start making real money, they start to think, oh, this is where I belong. But it's like, well, right. no, because no one's going to remember you for those movies, but we're going to remember you for, you know, Slumber Party well, Massacre 3. It, 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 that's, <laughs> that, that, that's so fucking true, though, man, because like I literally posted last year, I watched Trading Places again. I hadn't seen the movie in years and years and years. And I forgot that Jamie Lee Curtis shows her tits in that movie. And I posted on my IG. Very famous scene. I posted my on my IG and I was like, holy shit, I totally forgot that Jamie Lee Curtis shows her tits in this. And people are like, oh fuck off. You did not forget that. I'm like, no, I literally had forgot. Like I hadn't like I totally forgot about that because I think of Jamie Lee Curtis as like, you know, horror films and stuff. I forgot about trading places. I legit yeah. forgot about it. So that was like a great example of I've actually never seen that movie, but I've seen that scene a lot. Yeah. Like I just never <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> on repeat. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I'm ignorant to it. I, I was like watching I'm like, holy shit, she's other titties. I was like, damn, crazy. <laughs> but then it then it just, you know, instantly clicked on me. I was yeah. like, I I remember that now. Yeah. But Oh, I was I was so in love with her in the mid '80s that I, I saw that movie in the theaters, and once I saw her breasts, I, I could never forget that. Yeah, <laughs> those are memorable. He I love trading places. That movie's funny as hell, man. That's a. I haven't seen it oh, either. It's, it's been on like my like radar for a long time. Oh yeah, it, it, it's technically a Christmas movie. It, it takes place right at Christmas and shit. So yeah, you I, can watch I around this time of year. Yeah. Some Christmas movies. Yeah. I have a Santa Lewis action figure yeah, here. I, I technically <laughs> watched the Christmas movie before we started recording, but it was really a pervert movie described as an art movie, like just disguised as an art movie. What is it? Um, it's actually it's got it's called Carol. It's got Rooney Mara and um, Kate Blanchett in it, and you know immediately you're like, yeah, these two are gonna have sex in the movie, and you just really? watch it for an hour and a half, waiting for them to have sex. Like it's a good movie, I liked it, and I'm not like bashing uh, on the movie, but it's like you know right away, you're like, this movie was just an excuse for to watch these two have sex. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. I'm not a big Rooney Mara guy. I literally watched the yeah. weirdest Christmas movie last night ever called the the Christmas Martian. It was released by CIP. It's one of the sister labels from Vinegar Syndrome. It's from 1971. It's a Canadian uh, flick, and it is so fucking strange. Me and the wife were pissing ourselves laughing. We had big meat and cheese platter. We're watching this shit, just pissing ourselves. Laughing. It was so funny, dude. I highly recommend it. I highly recommend it. It was fucking so weird. It's so weird. Oh, man. <laughs> I loved it. Oh yeah, did you see those pictures? It was great. Yeah, those looks that looks good. Oh, Me and Carly love that stuff. We yeah. we went to a friend's uh, a couple weeks ago and was there was this um jalapeno like jam. So fucking good, dude. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I love that stuff. Yeah, we do all we the We always jams buy stuff. like the lazy stuff that we don't have to cut up. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, we have it all the jams and stuff like that too. We just it just wasn't that picture, but those are like my favorite like movie night things the charcuterie charcuterie boards yeah dude like we we did it so up man good. we did we watched the christmas version and then of course we had to do uh the night before which is like one of my favorite all-time christmas films man that shit is it still makes me laugh every single fucking Wait, which whole, movie the night before oh, i've never seen that. seth rogan uh-uh never seen it oh i've seen that yeah it's oh like the god it's it's, it's like the stoner movie with the guy from Reno 911, right? Oh my god, it's so good, man. It's so fucking good, man. Yeah. James Franco and shit. Like it's basically it's like their last <laughs> night for or Christmas, whatever. Yeah, and they just go on and act Seth like Rogan's walking around wearing his Christmas. juice shirt. Oh my god, dude. It's it's fucking <laughs> it's so fucking funny, man. Every scene of that movie is funny. It's great. Yeah, I saw that in Michael the movie. Shannon. I Michael saw Shannon. that in the movie theater, and that was like the only t that was the last time I saw it. I forgot Michael, Michael Sh Shannon's in it. Oh yeah. Oh, Michael Shannon's amazing. Fucking Miley Cyrus is in the film playing herself, but she's like, she's awesome. She's like cursing up a storm. It's great. It's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's good shit, man. I love that movie. And then of course we had to watch Bad Santa right after. I like my adult themed Christmas films, so. Yeah. Fuck, fuck me, Santa. Fuck me, Santa. Fuck I me, love, Santa. I love that, Santa. Oh, I watched that on Comedy <laughs> Central so many times growing up before I ever saw it, like on Blu ray or DVD or something, probably on DVD. And I remember, like, finally see, like, seeing that scene for the first time. I was like, whoa. Oh, the uncut version. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was like, whoa. Yeah. I don't remember that part. Oh, Billy Bob was the best choice ever for that movie. He's so I good. Just man. The kid, he, they just love the kid. Even the, the second one is so funny, dude. It's I like so, the second one. It's fucking just just as rude. It's amazing. I love like that bad taste comedy. Yeah, me too, man. 
Anyways, getting back to Terra Creatures from the Grave. Uh, I think I we're time think for better. ratings on this one. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah. So we'll, we'll start with Venom. Uh, what, what, what do you rate this one? Uh, overall, I mean, I, I I enjoyed the movie. It's got good atmosphere. I really enjoyed the set design. Some pretty good performances. I did enjoy the score for this one. It seemed to fit for me. Um, my problem with the movie is that for me, it kind of falls apart in the third act a little bit. Just they spend so much time setting up the plague spreaders and then we don't actually get them. And then on top of the fact that we never like no one in the movie ever acknowledges that Kurt more than likely was the one who was actually killing these people because obviously his master was really dead and the plague spreaders weren't um risen yet so right. that only leaves kurt the gardener so right um so that kind of bothered me that no one actually acknowledged that um but overall yeah i really did enjoy the movie i thought it was pretty good i'm i'm gonna come in with a 6.5 out of 10 for this one okay uh tyler mr sacedo i thought it was good wasn't great but it was pretty good, entertaining. It's not overly offensive or anything. Perfectly fine and educational for something I'd watch once. Probably wouldn't seek it out again, though. Uh, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. GP. Um, I went ahead and gave it a 7 out of 10. Yeah, I'm pretty much at, at, a, at the same thing. 7 out of 10 on this one. I think it's fun. Um, it's got a little bit of narrative issues, but shockingly, the gore is decent. Atmosphere is good. Um it's just a fun it's it's a fun quick ride you know it's a good 85 minutes of time waster you know it's 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 decent for what it is so try to make a good film and it came off pretty decent so i approve and that is terror creatures from the grave 1965. all right getting into the second film here also from 1965 called bloody pit of horror yeah <laughs> okay uh oh shit is there a quick synopsis oh no there is not a quick synopsis it's all like <laughs> it's all it's like a full <laughs> book here fuck <laughs> sakes i never look into these things damn it maybe this is short oh no it is shorter okay a photographer and models go to an abandoned castle to shoot some sexy covers for horror novels Unbeknownst to them, the castle is inhibited by a lunatic who believes himself to be the reincarnated spirit of the of a 17th century executioner. That's a little better than what they had on the other side there. Okay. All right. So it begins the conversation of bloody pit of horror. I kind of give a little brief <clears throat> um idea of of my history with this film I've, I've seen this film three times now i saw it first back in the 90s i had rented it and it looked like trash full screen shitty vhs just remember looking like terrible got the dvd sometime in the 2000s it was still a full screen transfer it looked a lot better um and it, it is what it is and then severin put out a blu-ray and we get this nice 69 uh widescreen transfer and it's fucking beautiful did it change the quality of the film for me? Absolutely not. This movie is fucking horrible. <laughs> this is this is a great example of a movie that is so bad that it is good. Because let, let me explain. This is a great movie to watch with a group of people drinking a lot of beers because you can have a lot of fucking fun with this. You could have a lot yeah. of fun. And I was thinking when I was watching this movie again, JP, this would have been a fun movie to do a commentary to. And I noticed that there is a commentary yeah. on the Severn Blu-ray. This would be fun to listen to, too, because just to hear <laughs> like these weird anecdotes about the film and like just weird shit that you'd probably never know unless you listen to the commentary. But this would be a fun one to do because all you can do watching a movie this bad is make fun of it. There's nothing redeemable about this movie. It's absolutely fucking atrocious it's so bad like everything about it is bad the effects are bad the story the acting why you watch this movie you're asking me is simply because the dub is so bad it's amazing it is literally the funniest thing all movie like the dialogue the dub is 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 something i was pissing myself watching this yesterday i was pissing myself out loud. i was like oh my god 
I've never had so much fun watching this movie before because it just looks so good. And I'm like, how can it be so damn bad? Well, the funny thing is, is like when it starts, you're like, okay, like it, it seems like something like of the time, you know, cause you're getting the, basically the death of the, the crimson mask or whatever. And in the, the crimson like, execution, the crimson execution. <laughs> <laughs> with the, yeah. So, it, with the, dude, so, so you're right. All the, I could uh, think about was like, dude, this sounds like the, like he would be a villain in like that show on SpongeBob. And there's not even oh, like the they, they give you a yeah. backstory. Boy. I was like, okay, yeah, it, it sounds does sound like, like that. I like, love that the outfit. Give, oh my god, dude! I love that they give you a backstory, but they don't really give you a backstory. It's just like this dude that was just like killing people, and then he got executed. <laughs> like, there's no story really. Um, I love that about this man. This movie is such a strange film because, like, of course, this the story is you know this this group of people go to this castle. They're looking for a place to shoot, you know, do these photo shoots and stuff like that. And a castle is a great place to do photo shoots because aesthetically that's fucking awesome. Right. And it's got a history, but it's not really about the history. It's about maybe who's in the castle and who thinks they're the ex or the, the crimson executioner, which turns out to be the funniest shit ever, because there's a part in this film when I swear to God in that last fight scene, when the dude fucking rips off his eye mask and says, I'm the crimson executioner. I had to pause the movie because I almost shit myself laughing. I was Dude. pissing myself. It's so fucking funny. It's so bad. It's like, oh my God. Like this is, you got to watch this movie with a ton of beers in you. You got to do it. Or maybe gummies or whatever you're, whatever you're into. Heighten your senses a little bit. Uh, God, this, this shit like the, is the, the, I remember just like, so the, the beginning part, like I was saying, it starts off like good. And you're like, oh, this is going to be like, uh, like, something like black sunday or something you know what i mean and then it gets to this like scooby ass do shit in the uh with the music when they're like first start taking the pictures and shit. oh my god <laughs> who is it and i'm like what the, the music is this shit dude? dude the soundtrack is so bad in this movie oh my god it completely god. doesn't fit what you're watching it feels like it's a soundtrack to a totally different movie and that they just used it for this like it doesn't make any sense because like it could have been that they, if they had a nice dark soundtrack to it it would have probably improved that a little bit also but the if, first person who dies the, the 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 when they're like oh shit like the, the he died uh <laughs> like how did that even happen he died uh, i don't think anyone really With the knows spikes the spikes that come down on him well or whatever. They, they, they played it up to like a malfunction right i think that's how they played it up as but yeah, like in theory, because there's somebody but doing did, killings. But, but like, no, I'm saying like, if the max executioner killed him, how did he do it? Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm. It, it doesn't make any sense, right? Or was it an actual malfunction? <laughs> right. It's a good point. It's, no, it's honestly a good point because it, they chalk it up as one, but obviously that would be so stupid in the narrative. Why would there just be a malfunction dead? It's got to be someone doing that shit, right? But, but it's how, like they were all in a circle and the rope was like right next to them. Yeah, so like how like, did it happen, right? Yeah, what no. the hell happened to this guy? I mean, the one redeemable quality to this movie is like, I don't know if you guys noticed, but every single scene that they shoot of the models, they're always changing clothes and there's always these close-ups of their butts and their boobs and their camel toes yeah. and their fucking, their moose knuckles or whatever you want to call them. There's yeah, like guys packages. Movie. This movie is like super eroticized. Like it's major, majorly eroticized in violence. Violence, eroticized violence is is kind of what I call it. And it's interesting because it's on both sides of the table. It's like a very hetero eroticized movie. It's very homosexual eroticized. Also, it's like all over the place. Like it's it doesn't really know what it wants to be. It just wants to be everything. I mean, it's that's super fine. Super schlocky. I mean, I can't. It is with funny. The mask, fucking crimson scavenger dude. He's fine. Dude, dude, he looks so bad. Dude, the guy when he starts flexing and like when he's fighting at the end and shit, and he's he's like, I'm the Crimson Executioner. Oh it's my a god. Pro wrestler, bro. <laughs> it's literally the Iron Sheik on drugs. Like it's it's fucking it's so ridiculous, man. Oh my god. Oh man. I'm like, dude. is this supposed to be scary or funny? Like, are they I'm glad it was in color. Like, I'm glad it was in color because if it was in black and white, it was doing it was actually hurting the film. You know, if it was in black and white, because it probably would have made it a little bit better. But being in color made it so bad that it was like this movie is enjoyable for me in the oddest sense that like it's something I will never be like, hey, guys, you want to come over and watch the bloody pit of horror? You know, like, but if you know, if it ever got to that point, like I would do this 
on the show as a commentary because this needs to be talked about in that aspect. This, in that this aspect. movie yeah, is could. like uh, this, uh, what's the mystery science theater like level. Right. It, it's yeah. so true because and, and this is a good one to do it too because it, it's very slow at times. And like I said, it's just it's panning Dude, shots oh of women God, changing. Part with the spider web, and you watch. Oh my God, I forgot about <laughs> that. Dude, so, the spider is so bad. So it the spider, like, it reminded me of like I the thought it was like fly, where it's like help me. The but spider like, might be the worst effect in horror history. But what yeah, makes yeah. that whole scene the funniest thing ever is when the guy randomly grabs it like it's not even a real spider and throws it. Like he, uh, like also, that, that's what makes it so funny because it's like obviously a fake guy. spider. He just fucking picked it up and threw it like it was nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but also I, the the way that the guy Tyler, what were you gonna say? I was just saying, I love how he it just shows in real time there's a guy like crawl under the spider web and you literally watch this guy struggle like to army crawl underneath it for like a full like forty five seconds. Well, Dude, the that guy the humps the ground ever with his is back like, for the, twenty minutes. The, the girl, when he first goes into the room, the girl is like gives this huge exposition dump about like, oh, and then there's arrows on the wall, and there's these spider webs, and then the, this is the most toxic spider of all time. And I'm like, how does she know any of this? Why did the why did the mask executioner tell her this? He just right. sat there. He explained it. He explained it like, a, like it was like a saw trap. The, tra- the saw <laughs> it was tra- like a saw. Tra- <laughs> Dude, it's like why did, I want to play a game. This movie is technically is like everything is so funny. Like the first scene where you get to see the first uh, kind of bodyguard. You know, all the bodyguards look the same in the film. They got the white pants and the striped shirts and shit. But the first guy, he looks like a fucking like a super low budget version of like Charles Bronson with this huge moose knuckle hanging out the front of his fucking pants. Oh my god, dude, it's so bad. I I couldn't I I couldn't stop staring at the guy's balls. Dude, I, I'm serious I, I because was, it was like right there in every scene. I'm like. I don't know what they were doing cinematographically in this film, but they focus so much on genitals and butts and boobs and like packages and shit. And it was just like, it's like over eroticized to the point where it's so comical. I'm like, dude, nobody wears pants like that. Like I could see the, mu- the guy, the guy's fucking mushroom for fuck's sakes. <laughs> Do I want to see mushrooms? Not really. It's the mushroom movie's like funny as hell. It's funny as hell, but like really, like, I don't know what was going on with, wardrobe wise in this film man but it was killing me it was fucking killing me man oh man dude like the all the, like we talked about scooby-doo last week but this this movie gave me super scooby-doo vibes yeah, i just I, I literally put on a scooby-doo shirt today because of these three movies doesn't it make you appreciate <laughs> scooby-doo though because like you know me i'm the i'm one I of the love, biggest Scooby Doo fans Scooby-Doo. in the world like i literally have every single scooby-doo TV movie ever made. Like, I, I, I love Scooby Doo. You don't have the Scooby Witch Project. <laughs> oh God! Now do you? The fuck is that, dude? It it it's actually like almost forgotten. That is it, not even legit, bro. No, I'm telling you, it's a. Yeah, it, it is. It yeah. was when the Blair Witch Project came out in like '99 or whatever. Right. They did like a Scooby Doo spoof, like on uh cartoon what? network yeah. or whatever and it's it's actually yeah, hilarious it's, like it's found footage and shit okay so they they they've never act like yeah. officially released that as no. a dvd or not yeah okay i was gonna say it's because like so yeah, all the movies from like 99 sure. until like all the tv movies because there was like before back in the 80s and then they started releasing the scooby-doo straight to video movies or whatever mm-hmm. from 90 i think 99 to like now I got yeah, well, the big one the Probably first earlier. like big one was zombie island which is my favorite of all the yeah movies. yeah well th- there was a period man from like the early 90s up to about well, the late 90s where they didn't release any of those straight to dvd movies or shit like that so or mm-hmm. whatever you want to call them but but they've been pretty yeah. consistent they only did one this year it just came out it just came out a couple weeks ago they only did one in 2023 what which one is, was it uh scooby-doo and cyber so i don't know i can't remember i just picked i haven't watched it yet I just grabbed it yeah ago, but uh, yeah it's the only one they did this year which is they're slowing down i guess but yeah, I don't there's actually those, i saw a video ones. on youtube the other day where somebody ranked all scooby-doo movies or whatever <laughs> yeah the the director yeah 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 there's a lot of good ones there's a lot of good ones man but i i know like those zombie island ones those are cool man yeah yeah zombie island I, i'm a big fan of reluctant werewolf because it's basically wacky races but right. with horror <laughs> right it's always uh yeah. boo brothers is is good and then yeah. i like some of the like the the, the original I mean, ones yeah the original ones are fun and then like uh post zombie island there's a few that i like but it's been a while 
There's yeah. two that stick out to me. It's uh the one where they go to some island and there's like the, the or like the cat zombie ladies. fucking island. That is zombie island. Okay, <laughs> yeah, it is zombie island. island. Yeah, <laughs> okay, that's what I thought it was. I was like, wow, it's all got the island. Cajun Cajun. Yeah, up. yeah, that one's yeah. awesome. And I like the one um, well, uh, oh, like um, with like some with like witches, the witch's ghost. It might be, and at the end, like There's they find a one, book, yeah. they're like, "This doesn't look like a Wiccan book," and he's like, "That's because he was a warlock," <laughs> 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 and they got tricked. <laughs> but isn't yeah. this movie? I would, I would totally review some Scooby Doo movies. That would be so sick. That would be such a good Halloween. Dave Z, Dave Z turned off the podcast just yeah. now. I would totally go back and do all those straight to fucking video. Yeah, I would do them. They're short. They're only like seventy four minutes. Yeah. Yeah, dude. We could do like a kids kids horror special thing sometime. Dude, just Start Scooby Doo. That would be so sick. Scooby Doo TV movies. Yeah, or Scooby Doo direct video was whatever yeah, they're from, called. Yeah. From the beginning. Yeah, there's about there's close <laughs> yeah, to forty of them now. There's close oh to forty God, of them now. Well, that's a lot. There'd be a lot of volumes of that. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah close to forty or something like that. But um, like, do, don't you find that Bloody Pit of Horror is like the textbook definition of like torture porn? Like <laughs> this movie is literally about torturing people <laughs> and it's like very it's you know i mean it's obviously not pornographic but i mean it's that right. level of like eroticity and stuff like that Got but it's like fetish, it's, it's like the fetish stuff in there yeah it's like the original like torture porn film eli roth would be very proud maybe he took his uh maybe he took some ideas from bloody pit of heart no i doubt it but but i'm i'm pretty You're sure like he fucking seen this before stuff. definitely had seen this one before come on probably you know can't put it by him but but yeah like the t- chinese wa- water torture scene and like there's that weird scene where like he's fucking you know the 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 modern day executioners hitting those fucking blades and they're all that like that like twirly thing and the blades mm-hmm. going a little bit you know closer and it's like cutting them up and shit i'm like the fuck like that whole scene goes on for like 10 minutes i swear to god <laughs> it's such a weird scene <laughs> such a weird fucking scene man but he steals the show in this for probably one of the worst performances in horror history like it is so funny, mm. man. Everything this guy fucking says is so ridiculously off the chain, man. Like I, 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 I say worse as in like funniest thing I've ever seen. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it's killing mm. me. It kills me every time he talks. It's so good. Do you like this one? I always just talk. Uh, no. Oh yeah, I, I'm gonna just. Disagree. I'm disagreeing with all of you. I fucking love this movie. I'm not saying that it's objectively a good movie. Uh, objectively, this is the worst movie of the three. I, I have no problem admitting that. But I feel like uh, Massimo, he he knew what he was doing with this movie. Whereas with the other two movies, he's trying to be more gothic, trying to be a little bit more serious. He leans into the comedy with this one. He leans into the sexuality with this oh, one. And totally. he leans into the insanity. I, I see it. You're saying that tra- uh, Travis's performance is, you know, over the top. I say it's supposed to be that way because he's fucking insane. I mean, think about what he's talking about. No, no, no. He, he decided yeah. to leave the world. He, he decided to leave the world because he was worried that it would affect his perfect body. I mean, what the, what the fuck kind of reasoning is that to disappear? You know, it's not like anybody right. was trying to kill him or people right. hated his movies. He was just worried that his perfect body, which, by the way, was not fucking perfect because he was sucking his gut in the entire goddamn movie. <laughs> yep, yep, Guaranteed yep. that guy has a little bit of a gut. Right. I, I, I literally out loud said, stop sucking in your gut. God damn it. <laughs> um, right. But I have a history with this movie, too. Uh, the mystery science theater guys riffed this movie. Oh, did they? Like eight oh, years did ago. they? I was about. See, to I didn't look know it that, up. and I, I, I felt like I felt like this was a perfect movie for them to do. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's also on Tubi, by the way. Both both the normal version of Bloody Pit and the Rift Tracks version are both sure, on watch Tubi. That so go ahead and check those out. Yeah, Probably would have been more um, entertaining. <laughs> But yeah, like I said, since I've been watching this for so long under the guise of it being a comedy, I enjoy this movie as a comedy. Like I, I you know, there's nothing scary about this movie. Um, I completely agree that the spider scene is so laughable. Your stomach hurts by the end. I mean, the fucking spider had a face. He had a face with a mouth <laughs> and, and two big eyes. And then the line but it's literally that a stuffed just, animal. Well, it's like, it's I was literally like, a stuffed animal. Like, oh, I was like, awful. is that supposed to just oh, it's be some like, spider machine looking thing? Honestly, the spider was part was like exactly. my favorite part of the movie. It, it was like watching a car crash. 
Absolutely. And, and, and we can't look away. Can we? I was, I was just, just like watching. I'm like, oh, so you guys are not going to try to hide this. You Although I do, I do like that scene up. when Buddy gets the arrow through the neck and he's like, he's dead and he's like driving circles around in the fucking. Oh my God. <laughs> For like 10 <laughs> minutes, yeah. he's just going in circles. I'm like, that's that, that actually was funny. <laughs> but then I, I could, when that I first funny. I, him, wish I was the like, angle. what the fuck is this? And then I, I remembered. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that guy was a bitch anyway. I was glad to see him. Yeah, that guy was a bitch. <laughs> That's the guy that couldn't pick up a sword, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. But, I mean, the, the line in that spider scene that gets me, and, and this is coming from an Iraq, uh, an, an Iraq uh, fan. I love arachnids. I've raised scorpions in the past. I have multiple scorpion and spider tattoos on me. When, when uh, what's her name? Kanoho. When Kanoho actually says, and she says this out loud, that, the spider has venom in its claws. I, I literally had a stroke when she said that. <laughs> a, spiders claws. don't have fucking claws. Right. B, their venom absolutely does not come from their goddamn claws. That would make no <laughs> sense whatsoever. Right, now, right. if you take it as some kind of mutant Lovecraftian nightmare, I, you can almost accept it. But the fact that no one's no one even reacted to the fact that there's a puppy dog sized spider, like no one screams, no one is like, "What the fuck is that?" I mean, it, it just really I I lose it in that scene, but I lose it in the best possible way. Like I said, I find this movie endlessly entertaining. Um, as I've already said, it's objectively the worst of the three movies, but this is the movie that I would return to the most often. I have such a blast. Whether I'm watching the Rift Tracks version or the straight up version. I have a great time with this movie. I think uh, Mickey, Mickey Haggerty as um, Travis does a spectacular job showing off that psychosis. I mean, the man is insane. So nothing that he says should make sense. So like when he screams, I'm the, cr the Crimson Executioner, he's not <laughs> screaming that to them. He's trying to convince himself that he's the Crimson Executioner. Right. Because he knows he's not. But he's so fucking deluded that you know, he, he's just insane. So anytime, any of his lines that just make me laugh out loud, I just chalk it up to his psychosis. He's crazy. He's a nut job. And obviously, even, even during his own death scene, he comes off as like just so pretentious and nutty that it's entertaining to me. So that's why I like this movie the best out of the three, because it knows what it is. This movie knows what it is, whereas the other two movies... Like I said, they're they're an attempt at serious gothic horror, and it's very hit or miss for me. Like I said, the third act of Terror Creatures left me a little disappointed, even though overall I like the movie. Um, I can kind of say the same thing about the next movie we're going to talk about, that I liked it all the way through, and then the third act just kind of falls apart on me. Um, but this one, like I said, I can look at it as a campy comedy from beginning to end and get endless enjoyment out of it. So even though I absolutely admit it's not a good movie, it's the best kind of not good movie. So well, that, I, I mean, accept. that's essentially what I was trying to say is like the, this movie to me is, you know, cinematically, it, it's a fucking disaster. I mean, and mo most people are, are not going to really care for this movie. And objectively, yeah, this movie fucking is terrible, but it's, it is a lot of fun. Like this one right here, like I, I, I was laughing through the whole fucking thing again. Like I forgot how fucking damn funny this shit was. Um, but it, it's just such a, it's such a, it's such an oddity when you watch these three movies together. Cause if you watch them the way I did terror creatures, this one, and then, you know, lady Morgan, it's like, this is like the fucking total black sheep. Uh, it just comes out of left field. It seems oh, like yeah. it's a totally different type of film. It does. It plays up, but you know, the funny thing is like, you talk about it being comedy and stuff like that. I remember watching this film, you know, about 15 years ago and still thinking that it was like, it was supposed to be a straight up horror film. Like I wasn't even trying to think that he was trying to do comedy in the film. And I think that's the way I took it again. I think that's why it works so well for me when I put it into that category of, you know, it's so bad, it's good because like, I feel like he was trying to make this film and it just came out disturbingly hilarious. You know, it came out as <laughs> bloody pit of horror. Yeah, agreed. Right. And you know, it's so it, it works on a level, but like, this is one of those films where fuck dude, like this would just be such a blast to play on a big screen with a bunch of people, a lot of beers and whatever else you want to do. Mm hmm. It's a great one because there's a lot of it's just, there's there's something for everybody. There literally is. Like I said, it's very eroticized in both sides of the spectrum. There's there's ridiculous dialogue. The dubbing 
is so funny in this movie. Like, I, I think mm. one, this is one of the worst, funniest dubs I've ever heard in my life. Like, there's some bad, like, Godzilla ones and shit like that. But, but you know, that always adds to it. This one, I think that's what it does. I, I don't think it would be as funny to me if I was watching this in an Italian dub. I think it yeah. works so much better in an, in an English dub and stuff like that. So, I don't know. This one is just, it kills me, man. The whole end, the whole fight scene at the end, just, fuck, I'm, oh, I'm in tears, uh, dude. I'm in fucking tears. He... The way the dude, what is that guy's name? The like the main actor in this, um, Mickey, Mickey Haggerty. Oh my god, dude! His acting in that scene, like he's taking it fucking vitally serious. Like, yeah, like, this guy's <laughs> dying for the role, man. Like it's vital shit, man. It's it's fucking so funny, dude. Like, oh my god, it, it's almost something mm-hmm. you gotta see to believe. You know what I mean? Like, it's hard yeah. to explain to people. You kind of have to maybe minorly appreciate this shit like you know if you like bad movies in a sense like like and i'm not saying you know when it comes to me and jp have had this conversation lots of times about a lot of these indie filmmakers of the last 20 years they purposely make bad films you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and you know they're bad but like he was i think he was trying to make a good film here and you know i I mean absolutely trying to make a good movie and it came off and the end product is just it's like i said vitally hilarious <laughs> it's like this shit is like yeah. isoport shit you know what i mean so it works it, it it definitely works for me you know and objectively speaking if i was you know to rate this film it's going to come in super low but like i said you know i would give my rating on an enjoyment and you know how it is it's going to be a yeah. lot higher because it's very mm-hmm. funny and this is something that, you know, I wouldn't generally just be like, hey, guys, want to watch Blood Pit of Horror. But with the right crowd, I would totally be like, hey, guys, let's watch Bloody Pit of Horror. You know what I mean? You know, you got the right people, mm-hmm. drinks, shit. Like, it, it's just, it falls into that category, man. There's definitely a list of movies that Bloody Pit of Horror falls into that you can have a lot of fucking fun with. So. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I think I think the listeners well, I mean, are very, my- very, very confused by this review. Like, well, is it good? Is it It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fucking it's in, bad, in, in, but in the, the best, best way. possible way. In the it's best the worst way. shit yeah. I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, the biggest issue I have with this movie, and it's really a personal thing. I'm I'm kind of a medieval torture enthusiast in the sense that I've like studied up on a lot of torture devices. Okay, this movie has the worst Iron Maiden ever made. This okay. the Iron Maiden in this movie would never work in a million years. It would never work. Okay, seriously, I have this. Uh, re- they also misused. I was wondering about that Iron Maiden too, because I was thinking to myself too, if that was plausible and going to work, I literally was thinking that. So that's, that's yeah. good that you actually, you know, you actually made that clear for me because I wasn't sure yeah. I'm not an enthusiast. I don't really know. So a true iron, a true iron maiden has barn doors where, you know, it's two doors that open in the middle. They pull out that iron maiden just had one door and it only had spikes in the midsection. And if you notice as they were closing it, if someone is in there, the knives won't go in. They'll hit them in the side. They might cut them up like sideways, like actually somehow disembowel them. But the way that they do it in this movie, it just wouldn't work. But the mm-hmm. biggest one that really bothers me is the misuse of the brazen bull. Uh, I don't, are, are you guys familiar with the brazen bull as a medieval torture device? I am not. Uh, uh, at the end of the movie, uh, the main girl, the one that he used to date, remember he puts her on top of that metal bowl and then puts charcoal inside of it? Yeah. yeah. That's not how you use a brazen bowl. A brazen bowl, is supp- you're supposed to put the person inside of the bowl and then you light the fire underneath the bowl. So it basically cooks the person oh. inside. Oh, and right, then, right, right. And that sounds way worse. Yeah. Oh, death. Oh, and it's slower too. And then on top of that is that budget as constraints. gases escape. <laughs> budget uh, constraints. It was just budget constraints on oh. that one. <laughs> you can't, oh, definitely. See, oh, absolutely. You can't see your breasts if you put her inside. Uh, after gas escapes, Valid. what happens? Oh, when when the gas escapes the uh, the victim, uh, steam comes out of the bull's nose. So it actually looks like a real bull <laughs> Dude, breathing smoke out. I cannot believe that humans yeah. used to do this to other humans. Like that is it. Like so, and and it's I've crazy. looked up some of those torture things too, man. Oh my god, yeah. that that there's some stuff, man, that literally like makes my stomach oh, yeah. hurt. 
Oh, I'm, gonna have to look I'm starting to I'm think though too, man. That. I'm starting to think, man, like hip hop wise and shit, like, you know, maybe some maybe some cats from back in the day, like late seventies and shit, man, when they were trying to figure out the styles and shit with chains, they were looking at this movie going, Man, there's some fucking fat gold chains around that motherfucker's neck, man. We need to rock <laughs> that shit. It's like those right? like that fucking chain is crazy, dude. What the hell's like nineteen sixty five, like that yeah. is just nuts. That's nuts. Made me laugh. Yeah. A couple of the kills in this movie bother me as well, aside from the torture devices. Um, did, did that guy die by full Nelson? Did he literally just do a full <laughs> Nelson on him and he fell over? Like that, You, I don't think you can Dude, break someone's never, neck. You've in a never full experienced Nelson. the Crimson Chins. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently <laughs> not. <laughs> but then. The Which is funny because I brought up the Iron Sheik, Sheik before. I brought up the Iron Sheik, and that was, wasn't that, that his was his move? finisher. Yeah. Well, he did. He did like a modified one. Like he would like yeah. get him he on the, the ground. And yeah, the camel clutch. Oh, okay. Like, well, yeah, on yeah. the ground, right. and he put his, his knees the under full, his arm. The full Nelson. Yeah, the full Nelson was um, the Steiner brothers finishing move. Right, you know, right, right, right. Scott Steiner. Yeah, because that guy like had like muscles uh, but, on muscles. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Steroid but the biggest steroid crime steroid. of this movie, the biggest crime of this movie, when it comes to its kills. Did he actually just throw a chain at that brunette and then she fell dead? He literally just threw a chain at her and it hit her and she falls down dead. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, but have you ever been hit by a chain from the Crimson yes. Flash? Yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> He's got some mental special been, power behind it. <laughs> yeah, I've been hit by just chains by Mexican gang members, so I know how the fuck it feels. But he he literally threw it. It's not like he was using it like a whip. He right. balled it up and then threw it at her. It hit her in the side of the neck, and she falls over dead. And I'm just yeah, like, but you were a, on, you were a young it. pretty brunette whenever yeah. you were getting attacked by these chains. You were oh, in a damsel man. in distress. <laughs> no, that's valid. That's valid. Oh, and and. Back to the, dam the the damsels in distress. The last thing I want to bring up about this one, his whole objective was the perfect human form, the perfect body. Yeah. Uh, you know, he he hid away in the castle because he was worried about his perfect body getting whatever corrupted. I think was his exact words. But then he's <laughs> killing these women that have perfect bodies. Like what the fuck? He, he he's killing these innocent <laughs> women that are almost perfect they're practically 10 yeah. out of 10s it's well, like, that, if, that, if that, that is the part that's confusing perfect body yeah. it's super confusing it's you super know? confusing <laughs> because i was wondering the same thing like he never justifies it either he's like he never says anything about like nope. oh you got like a little bit of a bump there and i'm gonna fucking you know take you out kind of yes. he never says anything about anything i know i know exactly yeah oh my god that's, makes no I, I sense makes no that's sense literally that's literally the last note uh, that's the last note that I wrote down in my notes, and I just I I, I got a nice big LOL out of it. I, I just I don't get it. <laughs> you're, you're contradicting yourself, you know. Right. It, like like if like if people like me and and Mike Merriman show up, then yeah, oh, kill the shit out of us. We're we're <laughs> definitely nowhere near the perfect human body. Right. But you're you're talking about fucking porn stars, and, and you're killing them off. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, they're literally <laughs> models, bro. <laughs> Yeah, they were yeah, obviously good. At, they, they were they obviously good perfect. enough to film every scene with those girls. Man, they're either changing or they're it's yeah. something eroticized, right? That's every what they fucking got paid scene. For. Yeah, it's so funny. It it's certainly so wasn't their acting. I just love the fact that like <laughs> no. every scene that they you know that they they pan to these girls and stuff. It doesn't matter what the scene is or what the what the scenario is. They're just changing. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah. yeah. There's no yeah, photo shoots going on, but they're changing clothes all the time. They're changing clothes, even though there's no photo yeah. shoots going on. Maybe the, maybe, the, maybe the director was just like, that's what, what do women do all the time? They change clothes. Oh, man. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> and what's funny, too, is that one of the best looking dead bodies in the whole movie wasn't a dead body. It was that one photo shoot where the girl had the sword through it's her neck. It's the trickery. It's the <laughs> like trickery. That, that looked good. It's the yeah, first. But it's then the first the guy. Thing. Oh, dude, that scene is so funny. It fucking tripped me right. I was uh, like, what the? I'm like, they didn't fucking show. Oh, yeah, it's the photo shoot when they pan back. <laughs> exactly. Oh. But just, I, I couldn't get over how that looked better than the real death. When yeah, they the should have saved that effect for a real kill. Right. Yes, thank you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, this movie. Who's, whose turn is it? Oh, Tyler? man, this one is. So we have started off. Yep. All right. 
Yeah, um, this movie was very good. Um, very bad, you could even say. Um, I'm going to give this one a 2 out of 10. Yes. A what? <laughs> two what was the score? I missed that. <laughs> two, two out of, out of two. Uh, Interesting. I believe I'm next, right? <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, this one didn't... It doesn't do what it does to you two, to me. <laughs> I did find it kind of funny, but yeah. like the, 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 the crimson tornado guy was just too much for me. And I actually watched <laughs> this at work and I was like, I was like looking forward to going back to work. I, after I started watching, it. <laughs> I was like, uh, I think we're going to go back to work. <laughs> Um, I give it a 3.5 out of 10. <laughs> I thought I was going to be the lowest, but I, I forgot we have Mr. Pretension here. <laughs> uh, th th this one is like, like I said, objectively, if I'm rating this film, it's going to be super, super low. I think it's, I think it's pretty poor, but from it, from if all you can, baby, if you can take this movie for what it is, and enjoy it for what it is it's 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 a lot of fun it's a lot of it's terrible like i literally laughed through this whole fucking thing like i kept saying to myself mm -hmm. the spider effect in this movie is might even be one of the worst things i've ever seen in my life but i think what makes it so funny is when the dude picks it up he's just like he's just had enough of the whole scene he just grabs it and he's like Ugh, and he throws it ah. it's so fucking, <laughs> it makes that whole scene well, i think he did that it. It just like I thought the scene just like like he plays it out in real time. We're just like literally watching this guy like crawl under the yeah, webs dude. for like two minutes. <laughs> that was unnecessary. And then he just grabs yeah. it like he, like you know he's been there for two minutes. He's like, oh fuck this thing. And the thing when the thing gets her, she's just like, ah. <laughs> yep, just yeah. wow. Oh man, dude. I I honestly, there's a very select few of people that would probably appreciate this film like some people do um <laughs> it, it's such a hard one to rate because like i said i think it's i thought it was pretty easy 3.5 yeah but like <laughs> you you rate differently because you don't you don't rate by enjoyment though either. i do i do but i just i this particular one that it didn't have that right for me, but. okay okay well that, that's fair enough that's fair enough yeah. <laughs> um so i i mean i found myself laughing quite a bit on this one i'm gonna give it a six and a half but like I said, if I was rating this one objectively, like based on exactly how the film was, like it's I'm down at like a two probably. It, it's it's a right. bad movie. It's a bad movie. But I, yeah. you know what, bro? I found and myself laughing at this and having like even when I finished it, I was still laughing. I was like, dude, this movie fucking. It was such a nice middle piece of this trilogy because we have this like super serious film, black and white, and then we get this, and then we get this black and white. And I'm like thinking about it after. I'm going. It was actually kind of a fun trilogy to do because the way it kind of played out. <laughs> yeah, Dude, this was my first one. <laughs> yeah, mine too. <laughs> but the the wow. thing about the, this, like, and we've had this conversation, I've had it particularly with Dave Z, but um, sometimes I miss reviewing, like, not so good movies. Like, yeah. even though we have to watch them, like, they are fun to talk about. Sometimes it's funner to talk about, like, a movie that's stupid than it is to talk about yeah. one not. It does seem like lately but you have to have a balance. We do not a lot of movies that we like. A masterpiece. Yeah. Lately, yeah. we've been doing mainly stuff that is good, and it's we haven't good, really yeah. had a lot of yeah. bad watches since we stopped taking Patreon requests. <laughs> <laughs> so I, do miss, I do miss watching like lesser quality films from now, from time to time. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. I, I would love to do a commentary on this one. This would be so much fun to do. Like the hip hop witch man, that that was ideal to do commentary. Do so much fun. Yeah, yeah, we can make that happen if people want it. All right, Venom, uh, what do you give this one? Yep. All right, well, I'm obviously probably going to be a little bit higher than all of you. Uh, I, I'm the same as Moods. I mean, if I'm going to rate this as an objectively as a horror film, then yeah, it's going to be like a four, four point five at best. Only because I've seen a lot worse horror films uh, from the mid '60s. So um, compared yeah, to those, this ones. one at least is a little bit. Oh yeah, by far. But obviously, again, you know, because of my history with the film, because it brought me so much joy as a comedy 
for many, many years before I finally saw it, you know, without any of the riffing. I, I find a lot of enjoyment out of this. Um, I like the setting. It's a beautiful castle. The, the area, the locale is really nice. You get a cast of beautiful ladies to look at. I mean, you know, one prettier than the other. Um, the only real hateable character in here is the photographer, but, you know, he gets taken no, out. No, Crimson soon, so Ludicrous as well. <laughs> ah, no way, dude. Like I said, like, as I explained earlier, the man is insane. The man yeah, is a I nut know. job, and nut jobs aren't supposed to make sense. Never. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> um, so I, like I said, every time he said something, yes, I would laugh, but I would also chalk it up to his psychosis and just the fact that he doesn't live in the real world anymore. You know, he lives in his little bubble where he's the Crimson Executioner. So, you know, whatever. Um, but like I said, I, I derive a lot of enjoyment out of this one. Um, believe it or not, I'm coming in at a 7 out of 10, and I will do so unapologetically. <laughs> do you think that like he became that character once the people came to the came to the castle? Because like at first, the like, you know, like typical film format, you know, right. it's like, you know, like, oh, you guys can't be here. You got to go. And they have to beg to stay. And then, of course, it's like, you know. They end up fucking not wishing they ever stayed. Yep. But like, you know, I mean, if you're already this fucking person, <laughs> if people show up at your place, if, if people show up at your place, you're like, oh god, you could just see you're just rubbing your fucking hands, going, oh fuck yeah, this is great, this is great. But I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna say that Travis was probably insane long before this movie started. Mm -hmm. But yeah. the Iron Maiden isn't opened until the. The, the people get there. I, I think once the Iron Maiden open and he, you know, quote unquote, gets the spirit of the Crimson Executioner in him, that's when he just goes over the top, you know, right. fuck the world type thing. Right. I think he always had mental issues, obviously. I mean, somebody somebody doesn't walk away from a lucrative acting career. Um, and obviously the guy is handsome, well built. I mean, he probably had a very good film career, even if it's just bit roles guys like that get work in Hollywood or, or in Italy, whatever, well, Scotland, wherever the hell this movie takes place. I was even, I was um, even thinking that but, too, man, like for 1965, like said, that guy's build was fucking insane, man. Like he was big. Like he had some big, yeah. Yeah. Muscles. Like I said, it's crazy. Yeah, no. He was a handsome fella. And even the uh, same thing with all of his, his goons, all of his goons were like tall and in shape guys. So obviously, you know, the, the, the perfect human form thing, does track you oh, know yeah, all the, his henchmen are buff tall buff you know guys oh yeah the blah, fake ass Charles that Bronson one with guy the that, uh, yeah and then the bald guy who gets into <laughs> a fight at the saying, stairs like he's buff moose knuckle. <laughs> <laughs> damn canadians <laughs> stop <laughs> fucking moose knuckle on that oh. fucking Charles Bronson wannabe man <laughs> 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 and this movie, this movie also personifies why I genuinely love joining you guys uh, in November for Italian <laughs> Horror Month, because Italian horror is the absolute king of putting gorgeous women in their movies more than yeah. America, more than Japan or France or I mean, the 60s and 70s uh, Italian horror scream queens are fucking stunning. Yeah. They're yeah. almost always amazing looking. And even, you know, in the, in the next movie we're going to talk about, we get two more beautiful you know, yeah. women, yeah. blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, Italian horror, I am always down for because I know yeah, we're going to be getting some we, beautiful, buxom women. <laughs> you're like one of the first people we think of when we think about getting guests for Italian Horror Month. Uh, yeah. I know this is like probably your third one, probably now third or fourth. Yes, sir. I think. Yep. Yeah. Third, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. the last time you asked, I wasn't available, sadly. Oh, yeah, yeah, because we were recording like a different time or something like that. I think it was like Fridays at like four or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, you know, with my wife working the night shift, uh, I can't really record too early. I can't record until she gets out of bed, which is usually about three in the afternoon. So, sadly. Yeah, and I actually that's kind of my limit. That's why I was glad you postponed this one. Right. I, and I was like, shit, I got to tell Venom we're pushing the show back a little bit because Moods wants to watch Buffalo lose. But, um, <laughs> I, well, that's exactly what happened. I was like, I was thinking, like, oh, well, he's not, it probably works better for him being on the West Coast. So, yeah, glad to hear it worked out better for you. <laughs> right. Right. I always forget that Venom's out Absolutely. here. Too. Yeah, so he's the same time as me. So, yeah, that works out good. Yeah. Awesome. Big time. Yeah. Uh, 
all right so yeah that's going to conclude the uh the bloody pit of horror from uh yeah 1965. all right so getting into the third and final film here we're going to take it back to the same year 1965 <laughs> with a film called lady morgan's vengeance all right so where's this oh here we go quick little synopsis and this is actually a quick one a young woman is killed by her treacherous husband and returns as a vengeful ghost yeah wait, wait kind of yeah kind of exactly yeah. <laughs> I know. I, it, it's, it, eventually it's, that's not really how i would like i know right tell you i mean what the movie's about but <laughs> I mean, really, yeah, because she doesn't even die until what almost an hour into the film, kind of thing. Yeah, it's like kind of a yeah. spoiler. I was kind of waiting for it. I was like, well, I mean, go. it is called like, Lady Morgan's Vengeance. I mean, you would yeah, assume so that like, she would around like the twenty-five minute mark, like when he when he started fucking with her. I was like, oh, he's gonna kill her like this somehow, and then like I'm just like waiting for that to happen because I read the description. That's actually that's actually a question I had about the film too. It's like why like if you had this diabolical plan to like kill your wife why would you go out of your way with multiple people to fuck with her before you offer yep uh no like, is, that, is, that, is, is that not one of those weird things that like it doesn't matter that you're gonna fuck with if you're gonna ki if you have this diabolical i think plan i think the to point kill. is to make her look crazy to people i guess but it's only well, them. I, in the I house. think he was questioning more the criminals. Yeah, it, it, but it's only them in the house. There's there's no one else. That's well, I, besides the doctor that comes and investigate. Like, but but that's another weird part of the film too. Is like the the husband has the doctor come in to like you know assess her and stuff, and he's like, I can't figure out what's going on with her and shit like that. And one's like, it's obviously, yeah. What's well, there's going your on. alibi right there. If like she ends up like dead or something, it's like, well, she was fucking. Well, crazy. They planned on killing her. The whole yeah, I guess. I mean, if that's what they were trying to do, I guess. The but. doctor comes in and is like, yeah, I yeah. saw her. She was fucking crazy. <laughs> no, but he said that she. I wasn't thought they were trying to. But remember, he says that he couldn't assess her properly because as long as she's saying that she's crazy, she's not crazy. Yeah. He literally says but that. But he also said her condition could worsen right. or get better. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, so one thing I got to note about this film, man. So um, yeah, it's black and white cinematography. We're back to black and white and stuff. Back to uh, Papilio making some, you know, he, this is his attempt at making another serious gothic type film. This is like a it's like a romance story disguised as a gothic horror film essentially i mean it's kind of what i kind of took away from this it's got a lot of recognizable faces in this film um gordon mitchell he's in like fuck, this guy must be in 500 fucking movies <laughs> like seriously like he just has that face that you just love to hate because like he's in tons of movies but paul muller who stars as uh, Sir Harold Morgan who he's the uh you know the the asshole husband in this one i guess he fucking looks like Bill Heinzman. Does he not look like Bill Heinzman? <laughs> Who's Bill Heinzman? I didn't even think of that. Bill Heinzman is the original zombie from Night of the Living Dead who went on to oh, direct yeah. Flesh Eater and yeah, star yeah, in it. I knew that name. He looks like Paul. He looks like fucking Bill Heinzman. It's every like I was watching. This was the first time I'd ever seen this movie. And I've seen Paul Muller in tons of things. He's actually a Swiss actor. He's not an Italian actor. He's a Swiss actor. And I've seen him in Thai actually have tons of movies with Paul Muller in it, but I've always thought that he looked like Bill Heinzman. And I just wanted to say that because I've always wanted to say that he looks like Bill Heinzman. Now that it's on my chest. <sighs> there, go. there we go. Um, but yeah, Lady Morgan's vengeance is, uh, it's, I, you know, I, I like this movie for what it is. I think the third act, like where, uh, venom you know he earlier he said earlier that you know it kind of falls apart from i think it kind of does a little bit too because the movie's called lady morgan's vengeance and i feel like she doesn't even really have that much i mean she does i guess towards the end of it it but gets kind of weird <laughs> yeah, what she does like but what she does though is she just kind of puts everyone against each other and they just kind of fight and kill off each other essentially like she really yeah, that part of it that part is brilliant yeah <laughs> like i mean it's not just her getting you know specific vengeance one-on-one -on -one against these people like she kind of fucks with these people and she puts them against each other and then you know like that was the fun part yeah so like it, it's kind of a yep. different it's kind of a different approach to a third act and stuff like that i thought it was kind of interesting but essentially like how i 
I perceived this film was it's like a love story disguised as like a gothic horror film. It really is. Um, I still can't understand how Pierre survived the, you know, being thrown over the boat. Explain <laughs> that shit to me, guys. If, if, if ocean, anybody can fucking just, the beach, if they're in the middle of the ocean, there's no way he's getting anywhere near shore, but he survives. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, there's so that many was things. kind of a weird <laughs> thing. There's so many things. A this passing boat thing. could have found them. I guess, but like, but he like he he wakes up with amnesia. He doesn't know who he is, but then he wakes up later and he knows who fucking you know Lady Morgan is. I'm like, there's so many things in the narrative. You're just like, ha ha ha. It's funny. But I actually, <laughs> I I was kind of into this one. I, I think that um like the whole gaslighting of her thing going on. Right. I thought that was yeah. pretty effectively done. Um, but I don't understand the gaslighting though because I, okay, okay. So just tell me this. My explanation if, is the if, best if, I I'm in, if if I'm in your if I'm in your a room next to you jp and i'm just talking through a vent am i really just going to hypnotize you to the point where you're like gonna do shit that i'm saying to you like obey me and stand up and do this and rub your vagina and like you know like you know what i mean i like, mean if, if you ask that, nice enough, is that gonna work in real life probably not but no. like real life like, <laughs> like, it, like, it, like did this, like, this mistress have, have powers that doesn't does it well the, I, that's what i was wondering too is like it, are they like the way it's like edited and shot it and like the way you hear the voice it almost seems like it's fucking supernatural in a way but yeah but it's, it's not though it's like literally her ta- telling um miss morgan yeah. that you know like she's just oh, she's like almost hypnotizing her with her voice like what she's telling her and she and i'm like okay yeah, but like so. what how do they explain like the like some of the other stuff they do to her like what stuff like the what else did they do to gaslight her the water thing oh the snake the yeah. snake or the worm snake. Or whatever that but was. so did they actually put a snake in there and then move it like or? And yeah then they go yeah because they show it later in the movie was... well they obviously oh, yeah, had okay. the real snake because they show um bill heinzman <laughs> <laughs> uh putting the snake into uh into like a little container and stuff so there actually is a real snake but yeah, yeah. but when you look yeah. at it from a film standpoint it makes no sense how they got it out of there because they weren't because she was still in the room when they came into the room right yeah. to be like oh where, where's the snake like they're all fucking with her but like no one was in there to take it out so i mean yeah it's yeah yeah you know what i mean it's I kind of like the door in the I, back I, of the room it's not perfect but i, there was, I like the <laughs> yeah the ideas there don't it's forget fun. there was a door in the back of the room next to her bed so there's multiple entrances uh, to that room but she was still in the room though when they came in like would she not have seen them come in to remove the snake or is she just supposed to be crazy at that no, point no, to the she point left the room. she ran out of the room yeah, she oh out right room. she, she does run out of the room ran out of the room yeah. right yeah, yeah, she like, did. Ah, there's a snake right <laughs> right she does run out of the room i thought they ran into the room but yeah you're right yeah, yeah. and then he was like what it was like but a then lot they, it was like a lingerie or something show show somebody oh, the key. she takes that yeah the the key in the pocket with the locked door yeah uh, uh the they see she sees the uncle outside and they're like what <laughs> so if you're so in love with somebody you just like when you wake up from an amnesia coma and someone's like it like you just feel that apparently like pierre did they have they have they have strong love i know that's like what they're saying there love um, i honestly all. thought uh, honestly, mm-hmm. I thought that they were just trying to make her think that she was crazy so that they could legally uh, deem her mentally incompetent. And then uh, Harold would basically take over all her assets. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the title is Lady Morgan's Vengeance. So, and, and if you read the synopsis before you watch the movie, then you obviously know what's coming. Um, but that's kind of what I thought they were going for, that they, they were yeah. just going to basically declare her insane. Yeah, then they can have all that, her you know, assets. Yeah. I was right. just waiting for him exactly. to kill her. So, like, when is they going to start with the vengeance? Right. Yeah, her death was a little disappointing. I, I, I really wanted to see Sir Harold actually, kind of the way he took out uh, the blonde. Uh, I would have liked to have seen him actually get his hands dirty a little bit more. Because it's funny because for the first half of the movie, it seems like Harold is the mastermind. But then w- about halfway through the movie, it suddenly feels like it's Miss Lillian who's the mastermind because she's talking about when am I going to be the master of this house, blah, blah, blah. You know, right. almost like she's, you know, um, kind of steering the bus. But but that's so, where this movie gets so convol- <laughs> it gets so confusing with like what's going like, you know, I mean, so Harold is cheating on his wife with the housekeeper, the, the, the blonde. Yeah. 
who's the you know the mind his re- housekeeper whatever. though his yeah, housekeeper yeah. but then it turns out that like she's yeah. in a relationship with fucking you know frankenstein oh <laughs> Yep. <laughs> and I'm like, there's so many twists and turns in this fucking film, but it actually kind of plays in nice to the third act where everyone kind of turns on each other and then he ends up killing her, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Kind of minor spoilers here, but but like, I don't know, man. The, the whole, like, when I see vengeance, I feel like there should have been a little bit more of her specific vengeance considering she was actually killed. Yes. I don't trust any of these titles, right? Like, I mean, when you watch when you <laughs> when you watch the film through, you're like, well, what the fuck? Like, she just this kind of turns everyone on each other, and that, that, that she doesn't really have a part in it. But like, the thing I d- that I was most confused about the whole film, I know it's a movie, but when she comes back after she like she just comes back after she dies, almost in like in physical form because Pierre can see her and physically touch her. What the fuck is that? What is that? Well, she, like she she's not even a ghost. She's a she physical. Says, right, right. But she says she says that if someone is murdered, if an innocent soul is murdered, they can show themselves to someone who truly loves them. So okay, obviously yes. she was she and Pierre were in love. So I mean, yes. obviously having sex with a ghost doesn't make sense. No, That's very but, illogical. But, but, but then again, odd. but later on she disappears and there's that scene where he's trying to hug her and grab her and stuff. And then she's clearly like, right. you know, an apparition, but like where, like there was no love there anymore. No, no. She, I think she can actually do that. She can control uh, when she materializes. Okay. And that's like what I, said, I was she wondering. Can only materialize to someone that she loves. Okay. Yeah, I was yeah. wondering that because, oh, Cause, she was, cause she she was never... proving to him. She was proving to him that like she is dead yeah. and like, okay. Okay. So that's what I thought. Okay. That's good. Yeah. I just want to clarify that because I was confused at first. I was like, but maybe she's just proving the fact that in the, because in the next scene, she's by the bed and she's all physical again and stuff. But I, I was confused how she came back right. physical anyways, because there was nothing special about her no, in the was- first place. She just comes back as a physical ghost. <laughs> it's just fucking so yeah, strange. It's crazy. Dude, it's always funny watching like movies or anything where, or like reading stories where like, how how people used to like set up the the wife and the and the the husband you know what i mean like you didn't get to pick who you were with it was like your family did and uh oh, it's always dude. funny seeing that in these movies because you're like yeah. you're like oh dude this is so cringe <laughs> like when she's like she's like has to ask her uncle if she could like not marry this fucking dude that she doesn't like <laughs> i just love uh, the fact that like they they tried to kill pierre off like it was that type of plan. Like he's on this boat and then they got this dude to go and fucking, you know, hammer him from behind and throw him over the boat and shit. And it didn't work. And I love when he like confronts me. He's like, he didn't even fucking die. <laughs> oh, <laughs> dude. Frankenstein and then, can't the, kill the one, shit. And I only say that I keep calling him Frankenstein because he was, he's in Frankenstein 80. If you guys keep wondering why I keep saying Frankenstein, but that guy, the, there's a, uh, the one dude, the, the, uh, the one dude slaps the shit out of, the, out of the lead, bro. <laughs> And it's like in the, these, these movies, bro. The way they are to women, like back then, yeah. like just like settle down, you crazy woman. <laughs> That's why I think this one kind of felt like a forties movie to me too. That happens a lot in forties movies. Yes, right. it's so much more physical. The thing that always, sure. yeah, the thing that always gets me in these movies is that criminals will be surprised that another criminal stabbed them in the back. Like, really, that's yeah. surprising to you? That doesn't even yeah, it's like, make sense. If you're a criminal, artist is then you know you're not trustworthy. Dude, it's caught yeah. on his friend and him. I like it. One of my favorite moments <laughs> exactly. in the film is when when Sir Hel- when, when Sir Hel- Harold Morgan says to fucking Roger, he goes, he's like, were you planning on killing me? He's like, well, you know, I thought about it. Like, of course he thought about killing you. He's <laughs> a fucking criminal. Mind. He's a fucking criminal. Yeah, dude. <laughs> but it is funny really how, God. like, they're always shocked when their, like, criminal partner criminals them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it, th- like this one goes a little bit bad shit by the end of it, man. It's like, uh, yeah, it gets like, oh yeah, like and it kind of gets out there. You're like, what? The it fuck? does, man. Now like everyone's just killing it? off each yeah. other, and like, oh man. And then there's like, there's some dummy action, and <laughs> oh, like the the, well, the like the biggest thing that left up on top of the thing with the throwing the, the dude. The I still think over, that bro. when he picks yeah. him up and windmails him off the top of the building has to be one of the funniest moments. It's even funnier than anything in fucking uh, Bloody Pit of Horror. Dude, yeah. <laughs> it, well, they sped up the scene, too. They actually sped up the frames, right? So, like, it, it, it was like watching 20s film, and it's like... Doo, 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 doo. <laughs> he was fucking flying off the top. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, for the biggest thing about this movie that left me scratching my head for the entire second half of the movie, I'm sitting there wondering, why are they keeping the uncle alive? Why are they keeping the uncle alive? And then when we finally get the explanation, it makes zero fucking sense. Hey. Why like, were they no bringing the alive? Thank you for bringing, bringing so that up because I was blood. confused as hell <laughs> as why he was still alive too. Because first of all, yeah. he's down in the dungeon being fucking tortured for the whole film, and I'm like, why is he not dead? Yep. What was the reason they wanted to keep him? They're like drinking his blood. Wait, that was really why? Yeah, I don't remember that. Yeah, they were drinking his blood to materialize, but it didn't. Like, make they, after sense. they drank his blood, they were solid. Dude, but they had like, to torture him while doing gonna... it. Why did they have to torture him the whole time? It didn't even make any sense. I don't think they had to. I think they were just having fun. I think Roger yeah. just enjo- enjoys torturing. So it's actually really sadistic then. I, yeah. Crazy. Yeah, I think, yeah. He's Roger is like the a, true crimson executioner. He's going to run out of blood. Wait, Eventually, is it? Yeah. The, which movie had the like rain? Was that? That's the first movie, right? Which had the what? The what? The rain. At the end of the movie, they're like, it's raining. We're saved. No, oh, it's in the first one. <laughs> yeah, that's the first one. And it's in the it's in the song lyrics. They're literally telling yeah, you. It's yeah, yeah. That's what like, I was trying to remember it's earlier. It's raining. We're gonna yeah. yeah, I was like, oh my god. Yeah. Like, so fucking At bad. first I thought it was like the Crimson Exterminators movie. <laughs> it was the first one. <laughs> it's like his interest music. Um, <laughs> yeah, this one, this one, I don't know. I, I think I maybe like this one the most out of us. I don't know. I I was into this one. I thought this one was also oh, more no, I enjoyed artsy. this one a lot. It was a little more artsy yes. than the first two. Um, oh, well, the first one was too, but it, uh, there's some like good shots and and uh, lighting and stuff in in here. Yeah, I think this was better produced than the first one. Like, uh, yeah. those, it, oh, uh, this one definitely is shot better. It, it yeah. definitely has a better aesthetic. Like it, everything about this film just feels bigger than the other two. But um, I, the writing was better in the first movie. I think. I think the first one's the best. Like, yeah. Well, it's my favorite I, one. I, I'll just say it's my favorite one. This one's my favorite. Mm. I think this one is too. Yeah, as far as quality goes, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, if I was to say for best, this is definitely probably the best film. But you know me with like relationships and fucking like that. I hate that shit. <laughs> I think fucking relationship shit is corny as fuck, man. Like I, I'm not a big relationship person, man. So love stories and shit. It, it just felt. <laughs> it, it, I, I feel like I was watching a fucking love story disguised as a gothic horror film, right? Because like, I mean, also Pierre is alive, and then they have this thing at the end. I'm like, oh god, come on. Fuck up. There's no one loves you, anybody. It's fucking garbage. It's bullshit. Yeah. No, I mean, but you know what I mean? Like, it, I mean, that's just, that's just me. I just have a bitter taste on life because of past experiences. No, no, same here. I'm not <laughs> but, a fan of pitch and hold romances in movies either. Same with yeah. me. Yeah, but I mean, quality wise and production wise, this one definitely holds its own, man. It, it's It's got some great actors in it, actresses. Like, I, it's got beautiful women. Like, I mean, this one, I mean, everybody in this movie is in like a million movies, right? Like, I don't know. I mean, you probably know Venom. Like, you recognize everyone. Like, you're like, where the fuck did I know? Like, I, I'm I'm that person. I have to like, oh, yeah. I have to look it up. I'm like, where's Paul? Malone? I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, he's from this, 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 and this. And I'm like, where's Erica Blanc from? Oh, this, 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 and this. And I'm like, fuck. I've seen all these people in like a hundred fucking movies. Like, sort of lovable yeah the only the only films. actor yeah the only person i didn't recognize in this movie was terry uh the quiet of the criminal bunch yeah the, right. the brunette girl that really doesn't do much right she's, yeah, she's the only like one the I least didn't recognize. used right yeah everybody else i'm like oh yeah i've seen him in that i've seen her in this i've seen him yeah in this. lurch looked really um, familiar to me but i didn't i don't i didn't look up anything i don't even look up like tyler mentioned he read the synopsis i don't even read the synopsis before i watch these usually I just go in blank. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's the best way to go. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I had just watched Erica Blanc in, um, in the third eye actually, which we talked about yeah. earlier and, and she was in kill baby kill, which we mentioned earlier too. And like, fuck, it's like, you go back to these filmographies. And I'm like, Oh fuck. I'm like, that's where I know I'm from. <laughs> but when you watch so many of these damn movies, it's like, shit, they're all in all these movies. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> like you look at my fucking, I like my letterbox uh, stats. I've got guys in there that have been like 20 movies and I'm like, oh shit, that that, that was Pegasoni. <laughs> the guys are fucking every guy. It, it, it's <laughs> like as if uh every film was directed by Quentin Tarantino in Italy. Right. It has like, <laughs> all the same players. 
<laughs> but I remember her because she was in the one of the Sartana movies too. Uh, yeah, Sartana's here. Trade your pistol for a coffin. What a great title. Uh, the night Evelyn mm-hmm. came out of the grave, the devil's nightmare. Like I was like, holy shit, dude! Like I know, I know this chick, man. I like the night Evelyn came out of the grave. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of that, man, I saw someone's post the other day, and they're like, they called that a giallo. Would you consider that a giallo? No, um, I don't think that's a giallo at all. So. That's well, a gothic yeah. horror film. I would mean we had this I'd conversation last now. week too yeah. with fucking House of Laughing Windows or something. Yeah, that movie's not a. It's 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 a horror film. But yeah. the night that Evelyn came out of the grave, I wouldn't call that a giallo. I mean, I guess it has elements, but I would call that more of like a gothic horror film. I would need to watch it again to say, yeah. just because I can't. My memory's shot at this point. I just thought it was interesting, just because we were just talking about this whole giallo. It, people sometimes think that every Italian movie is mm-hmm. a giallo, but Suspiria, greatest yep. giallo ever. Oh, that was a funny conversation last week. <laughs> God, <laughs> zombie. <laughs> <laughs> zombie that's that's a hell of a giallo <laughs> fucking stage fright is not oh. a giallo come on man stop I fucking know. around <laughs> i mean stage fright I was, I, is early on in the- acceptable of like a mistake yeah, I, than yeah. fucking zombie. i can see where someone can argue could argue stage fright but like when you start getting to that other stuff like come on dude like you're not even trying to have a real conversation no no mm-hmm. <laughs> um, was anybody else confused about the setting in this movie like I didn't know they were in Scotland until the end when they mentioned it. Like no, I, I was confused. You know, why something else that confused me? I think they mentioned it earlier that she was going to like he was from somewhere. Or I could be mistaken. I don't know. But so, why? Some, would, but why was it, it Scotland? I, was he Scot? Was he supposed to be Scottish, or he just lived in? That's Scotland? what I'm wondering because they were wearing. Because yeah, Sir Harold and Uncle were both wearing kilts at the beginning of the movie. Right. So I'm like, are these people supposed to be Scottish? But it's just Italian because it's an Italian movie. Um, but this is like the Benetton ad of movies because you've got uh, an Italian woman living in a Scottish castle who's married to a Scot, but she's in love with a Frenchman. It <laughs> holy shit. A little much. Right. There's a lot going on here. Um, but <laughs> right. also, what confused me, like, is just at the beginning of the movie. These, some of these old movies, like, set up so fast, right? It's like you find out she's in love with this dude. She tells her family that she's going to be with this dude. Her supposed setup husband is told, "I'm not going to marry you." Dude's killed. Then, like, then it flashes forward some time. And then you get the no. She's whole, all of a sudden going. She's moving in with her new hut, or she's getting no. Married, not at first, in. right? Because she gets married, and then she's like, "I got to go take off for like a year with my uncle or something." I assume that's where all this was planned. Yeah. Which oh, is yeah, weird. Yeah, you're, you're that right, was yeah. just a weird aspect of it. Like, yeah. <laughs> like I got to go disappear. I just got married, but I got to go disappear for an extended period of time. Well, and, she you know, then I'll be all yours. <laughs> Well, yeah, she openly that admitted that she wasn't in love with the guy. Right. I mean, if you're not in love with the guy, I mean, I, like, I don't think they ever consummated their marriage. I well, that's that's why they tried to murder together. Pierre in the first place, though, is because, like, yeah, she, yep. you know, so, she I mean, dumped him. And then he's like, I will murder you for money that or murder Pierre. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't make I, sense I love when to me I love when settled. fucking Harold he confronts fucking Roger and he's like, "You can't even kill him." <laughs> I love that fucking part. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, you throw somebody off a fucking boat in the middle of the ocean, they should be fucking dead. Yeah, he did it's his like, job. bro, like, like you really gonna blame? It was a me miracle this, that bro? happened there. It like, was a fucking miracle. <laughs> like Roger was good with what he did. It was a miracle. <laughs> like it's hard to get more dead, assuming that <laughs> right. getting dropped off in the middle of the fucking ocean. <laughs> so fucking funny oh, oh shit that. man this was actually it, t- it turned out to be a really fun watch like all three films like i mean these yeah. were great lengths that they were all like 85 minutes they were like perfect lengths they never overstayed their welcome yeah. um it was nice to do something that wasn't giallo's it was like straight gothic films and this wasn't even planned like this we just yeah. kind of did this right like well, this I is the way it, it worked it, it, as a whole, I think this was a nicely balanced year of Italian horror. Yeah. We had a little bit yeah. of the giallos, and then we had that one where we went 70s, 80s, 90s, and then, you know. Well, the first two weeks were like pre- pretty much all giallos, and, the, and then the third week was like, yeah, we had three different decades, and some people will argue that the House of Laughing Windows is a giallo. I don't think it, it's not a giallo. It's not a giallo. I know one person that will. 
It's you? not. No, I'm not the guy on that like on the Facebook page. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it's not. It's a, it's a horror film. <laughs> it's a straight up horror film. Just like all three of those, and all three of these, and and this was cool because it was like all gothic, right? It was. Yeah, and it's and we never get a chance to literally review three films from the same year usually, so it's kind of cool. So strange. Yeah, I kind of feel like he just well. works for some production company. They just are like, okay, you're gonna go work on this movie, and then I told him to do the next one, and yeah, you probably That's didn't probably have as much happened. to do with it. Yeah. So what? Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, we have some ideas what we're gonna do for Italian month next year. We got to fill in some gaps, but I yeah. think next year's gonna be pretty fun. It's gonna, gonna be gonna, awesome. It's yeah. our ten year anniversary of starting italian horror month uh on here yeah yeah so that it's gonna be we're gonna we might do something a little different but i think you guys will really like it <laughs> fuck yeah man it's gonna be super fun Vinny, you gonna come back next year for the 10-year anniversary i have never said no to an invitation i will always come back if i'm invited man we should get a bunch of people on on shows man like we should probably try to get tom like people that have been on the yeah, show and dave stuff. z yeah dave and yeah man just have and a bunch of people brandon's ass out of retirement for a special appearance i think we know two <laughs> shows that we're gonna, celebration we know two shows that we're gonna do but the mm-hmm. other two like we could probably just you know we'll have to figure out and stuff but yeah, yeah. we got a year to figure it out <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because of this no, year you this year it show, out now well no it's funny because this year we had figured out last year at this time yeah yeah this was <laughs> that was like the first time we figured out two years in a row yeah so this was a whole year nice. in planning yeah it's cool. <laughs> well uh i guess we should probably rate this bitch huh yeah lady morgan's vengeance who's up I think uh, me. jp up uh yeah i actually really enjoyed this one it was I, like I, I struggle with the mask abolisher movie but this one <laughs> was a hundred percent like i was into it and and it got like i agree that the third act was a bit disappointing because i was i was just really into where the hell the story was gonna go like what they were gonna are they like trying to get her to like go crazy and kill herself or are they trying to you know get her uh put in a psychiatric hospital or are they what's what's the end goal here and um then you also got like the i literally forgot all about the boyfriend for a little while because they show they show him in the hospital and then you're like you know he's gonna come back in the third act but then i literally just forgot about him for a long time but uh yeah i i think it's pretty good um i like it a little bit more than the first film i know some you guys like that one a little bit more but uh i'm gonna go ahead and give this like a seven and a half out of ten who is your favorite one so it's up to me um so i gotta say man like i wasn't expecting this one to have such a downbeat ending there's a really funny scene at the end of the film where someone gets fucking crushed by like a fucking trunk or some shit that shit is pretty <laughs> funny i love that i think that's great um <laughs> i like this one man I, I, again when it comes to romance you love it fuck it i hate it i hate it so much like i'm just not i i am like i'm not trying to be hard or not i'm just that's the way i'm you can ask my wife i'm the i'm the least romantic person in the world and that, i think that's what she likes about me too because i'm just straight up um no i'm i'm pretty pretty lo- not romantic yeah i'm just i'm just <laughs> not that person so when i watch things like this i'm like and this one to me is like it's it's like a romance film and don't take that the wrong way it's 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 honestly that's just how i see it. it you know other people might not really see it like that but i see it like a as a romance disguised as like a gothic horror film but there's it's definitely a horror film it's definitely a horror film it's i think it's pretty well written i think it's very well acted <laughs> this one does go bad shit in the third act but there is an element of the third act that i feel like it's just kind of disappointing you know to go back to that i don't want to give everything any, anything away but but I still think this one's very, very solid. Uh, I think the terror creatures they gave seven. I'm going to give this one also a seven. I do prefer terror creatures over this one, but I think this one is really solid in every aspect of filmmaking. But good film, good film. Cool, cool. That would be all right for me. I, I enjoyed this movie. I I really really enjoyed the first two acts. I thought it was really really well written, well performed, well edited. Uh, I had no major issues with the score, um, despite having some very villainous characters. Nobody was like ultra hateable to the point where I just didn't want to watch them on screen at all. Everybody per, uh, performed 
their parts well. Um, obviously, I've already said that the third act kind of falls apart for me. And if, if you're going to give me ghost vampires, then you got to give me some kind of explanation. Even if it's a bullshit explanation, just give me something. Because that's it's, just confusing as it shit. It is straight so. left field, right? It's straight left field. And it's yeah, something that I wish was no explored sense. more. I wish it was explored more because, yeah. like, it's such a weird mm-hmm. thing that, like, they're ghosts. Why the blood? Exactly. It yeah. makes no I, I sense. think this movie would have benefited. Dramatic effect. I, 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 <laughs> dramatic, confusing effect, you mean? Confusing effect, yeah. I definitely would have enjoyed... I, I, I would have liked to have seen Lady Morgan be dispatched a little bit earlier in the film so that we yeah, can explore me too. Me too. the whole, you know, ghost drinking blood crap. Um, but, you know, it, it is what it is. It's still a fun movie. Um, I'm with JP. This is probably objectively my favorite of the three as far as, you know, quality of filmmaking, story, everything else. Terror Creatures falls apart more than this one does in the third act. This one just has one element that just kind of leaves you scratching your head, whereas tor- uh, Terror Creatures has a few of those. So I, I'm right there. I, I'm actually going to come in maybe slightly higher, and I'm going to say 7.5 out of 10 on this one. Yeah, I, I really I, enjoyed this. This was a second time watch for me. So Yeah, no, this is the first time. I, didn't, like, I, I feel like with Terror Creatures, man, I think the thing that <laughs> just falls apart is just that narrative lull in the fact with the... Yeah. with who did the kid like th- there's that point where you just can't get past for myself because it's pretty obvious right like it's written the narrative but um mm-hmm. no this one is uh this is a fun to- I, I i wasn't expecting the downbeat the downbeat ending in this you know like i'm surprised you guys didn't yeah. talk about that shit more because that that shit was kind of funny to me like it was a, literally a trunk that just destroys somebody <laughs> 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 I thought it was a piece of the architecture. I, I thought it was like a big cement block or something. Oh, it could have been. I, a, I, could be I thought it was a trunk or something. I don't know, man. But I'm just like, what the? Like, did he? Did that just happen? Like, like the, this is a downbeat all, ending oh, film. Like, yeah. It didn't make sense to me too that if they needed blood, why were they so willing to kill Pierre? Like, he if he's the last yeah. living person in the castle, why kill him? Like I thought you needed him for his blood, but now nah, let's just fair. throw a big piece of concrete at him. <laughs> it, it does. It doesn't actually make sense. Or maybe it's because they had that glass full of blood just before that. I don't know. They feel like they were good to go for a while. I don't know. Maybe. But they yeah, just, like it, they just really didn't like Pierre, where they would just be. They'd rather just not. Be open. <laughs> yeah. I just Pierre, find the fact yeah. that like this guy I mean, gets totally done wrong in the beginning of the film. He's amnesic for the whole thing. He's confused when he gets to the castle. He's all fucked up with his like his dead girlfriend and shit. And then pow, he gets fucked up in the end. <laughs> That's yeah, well, morbid he's and funny. What do you expect? <laughs> that dude gets done wrong, man. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> It's so good. Oh, fucking Lady Morgan's Vengeance, man. Tyler? Uh, I would say this movie might be a little bit better made than the first one, but I, I like the writing a little bit more in the first, but they're about even. It's kind of just preferential, but I'd say both those are an even plane, so I'm going to stay with the same rating and give it a 6 out of 10. Okay. Nice. Cool. Nice. But uh, I do recommend watching all three of these films, especially in the order. It'd be fun. The order that I did? No, <laughs> the order of man. actual. <laughs> well, like, well, after written. you watch Bloody Pit of Horror and then you see a movie called Terror Creatures from the Deep or whatever, just like, <laughs> man. Now, watch Terror Creatures from the Grave first. Bloody Pit, then Lady Morgan, yeah. and y- you're all good, man. It's I think black and white, did, color black and white, and it, it actually makes a lot of sense to watch it like that, too, so... I watched them from worst to best, so it worked out good for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bloody Pit, worst. Terror Creatures from the Graves, second worst. And uh, the fucking Lady Guy movie, but Lady the, Vengeance. Wait, lady Look, I can't remember the titles of these things. But dude. was there actually a worse one? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, Bloody Pit of Horror is a bad movie, but it's it's still, it's something you got to see, though, man. I think if, like, no. see, JP has no I'd rather get that. Yeah, like, it, like, it's in, like, that bucket list territory. It's like, dude, uh, no, have you seen Bloody yeah. Pit of Horror? This old man. I, I, I think getting it out of the way is the way to go. Do that one first. <laughs> 
Just watch the Rift Tracks version. At least that one's really Yeah, I, I'd gotta, probably like that. I just gotta, thought this is what all those guys' movies were going to be after I watched that. And then I saw Yeah, that's what I thought, too. So I was like pleasantly oh, surprised when they were yeah. different. Man, we got to do, do that show, JP. We got to do that show, man. No, top 10 of our favorite films, like our favorite shit films. Guilty favorite pleasures, films. we could call it. Even though, like, yeah. I know even guilty. guilty I, I hate the term guilty pleasures. I know, but it because... makes so much sense for what you were trying to talk about. You know, right. I mean? yeah. it, it's, I don't like it either. Cause like I'm films that we know that are like terrible, stuff. but we love, you know, it's yeah. like, I See, guess like, that's the technical that, term. Like, there's films like I don't think are terrible, but there's films that like I would like not like to admit that I really like, for example, like Jennifer's Body. I like that movie. I like that movie, but I'm not going to lead with it. I don't <laughs> like for I, me, I don't like when I think movie. of movies that I love that are like, but but they are like bad. I think of stuff like Contamination Point Seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Which is actually an Italian film, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's Killer Roots, bro. Yeah, <laughs> but I love it. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, that would be yeah, that would be fun. Um. This is the end of Italian Horror Month. It's pretty crazy. This one went flew by this it's month. Fucking sad, man. Now we're going to get back to semi regular. Well, I shouldn't say semi. It's going to be regular programming, but um, we got a couple shows lined up um, for December. And then we got, you know, the Christmas show, year end show. Um, man, we're back in full force, man. Like, this is yeah, what then, six shows, we have six like shows a, we've done in a row here. So, yeah, yeah. six. We're yeah. doing good, man. We're doing good. Um, Seven, actually. I think our record is like 13 in a row or something. Yeah. But I think we're going to, I mean, honestly, man, I mean, through December, Jen, I, be, I I think we're going to go retail fucking May. We're not going to miss anything, man. It's going to be, it's going to be a good season. We there's one, there's like definitely that. like one weekend in April. I probably will miss, but I, yeah, I would love to, I would love to have a strong, uh year this because with the last couple we've only done like a hit we did less episodes than we normally do so I w- I'm it's funny because like, last year i thought we did less than we did and then i went back and counted and i'm like we actually did more episodes than we thought we did but yeah you know but, i mean but yeah. it's less than usual we we took an earlier break and we missed yeah. a couple of weeks but like yeah. i'm super i'm like really enjoying this i i miss watching movies every week for the show that's like i, I love doing it i love talking on the show about just random shit tangents i always always miss doing the show when we take breaks like like Mm -hmm. it's a good thing because we get to miss it but what once we come back i'm like super pumped to be back Mm -hmm. yeah right yeah i'm looking for i mean i'm sad that italian month has ended but uh we got some new ventures and we're probably going to come back with maybe some maybe with some zoology shows and then christmas and then we got the top 10 in 2023 which is always going to be fun we're not really too sure who's going to be on that show yet we'll probably probably have carly on there yeah we'll probably announce that later on who's going to be on there i don't know if dave's going to be on there or either dave um no idea what's going on with that but uh i guess i guess we'll figure it out but um i mean they have a, like dave z he has his own show right right yeah so, dave parker would be a ideal choice because obviously he's done the last couple with us yeah <clears throat> but we'll see how that goes if he's available and just like venom like he's he's got his own top 10 show or he's got his own show for that yeah. stuff and you know it, it i mean it's it's hard to ask people that you know that have gonna do their own it's list awesome. either on listen and go do another it's like no yeah it's, or it, or ours might come out first or something and then it's right. like you don't want to spoil your list for your main show when are you guys planning on doing your top <laughs> 10 show there venom uh it's always the first show in january the, oh it's, that's the that's same time we do too. that's exactly yeah. ours so we record yeah sundays so that'll be whatever date that is like the first sunday whatever so yeah, yeah we we like i know a lot we'll, of shows try we'll to probably do ours the next day be yeah. before the first of the year i like doing it after yeah i like that better too yeah yeah i feel like you watch everything up until the end of the year and then you do your show yeah i, and I just feel all, like that's it and i actually enjoy like one of my favorite times it's crazy because i i hate watching a lot of movies in one day sometimes but i fucking love like grinding for like the week before we record a big show like that 
for some reason it's where i find i think it's because i always find something i love in that week mm -hmm. because i you know there's usually like a, some heavy hitter that i didn't landmine goes really click last yeah right that was literally night before um same thing with golden glove i think that was early like pretty late into it mm. um but maybe it wasn't i can't remember but uh the the whole like prepping like rapidly in the final like two weeks is for this end of the year show or like the retro years we do i always enjoy that it's fun fuck yeah fuck Dude, yeah like going so hard for 1980 for one month was a lot of fun right yeah like you go I, like i go so hard like the last two weeks where like there's time like i remember the 91 show we did i yeah. literally watched like seven movies on saturday and then like you know seven on friday and like four on thursday <laughs> and like got like half my totals like from three days yeah it's grinding them out oh man yeah that's why i actually like tyler's a good fit for this show because he actually likes grinding stuff where like you know some people especially jeremy like get him to watch like 10 movies <laughs> was rough <laughs> right that was never a fucking happen. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i think that's what we're gonna probably have well, I, don't, I feel like with the 2023 uh prep like i feel like i don't have enough of a list to like you know overdo it at the end here like yeah. i i i just man this is gonna be the lowest total of films i've ever watched for one year ever i'll probably ever. I'll probably have the appropriate amount that I always have. I always usually hit between 75 and a hundred. Um, but I would probably say most of the time I hit like 75, 85, somewhere yeah. around there. I feel like that's probably where I'll hit. I, I think I have more watches done than you. I'm at, I got I'm 35. At like four, I, I'm at 40. Yeah, I'm at I got, 17. I got 35. <laughs> right, man. Like, I, I feel like, I feel like yeah. if I hit seven, I'll, hit a, I'll, I'll do like, I think I'll do at least like 40 to 50 for sure. I think 50 is like the minimum for like a, I think I can do 50. I honestly, do. I honestly yeah. was like a little like surprised. I even had 17 movies. I thought I was going to be further behind than that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually going to watch something after the show tonight because I got to get on. I got to start peppering in 2023 movies with everything else I watch. Yeah, I did this. Yeah, I, I was. Hell House is decent. I'm going to start doing like more. What work. was decent? Uh, the new Hell House movie. Oh, oh yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, that's on my list. Out. Yeah. You know what's funny yeah, about I that? Like I was actually just thinking about that today and I was like, because I was writing down show ideas and stuff and I'm like, man, that's another another movie that we have to actually re-up. Because we did that trilogy. Oh, damn it. <laughs> we did do that trilogy. Right? So we actually have to do that one now. I'm like, fuck, man. There's another one to the list. I'm like, you know what? Christ. We could do Never like, next October or something. We could do. Um, I assume that the movie set on Halloween, right? Or like around Probably. Halloween. It's like a, which one? it's usually like a Halloween haunted house, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> maybe we do oh. like that terrifier. Well, shit, we might as well wait for Terrify Three at this point. <laughs> right. But, yeah, That's I don't Christmas know. Movie. We we have a lot of uh yeah, right. <laughs> oh man, uh, our fucking our re ups, man, we have so many. <laughs> Yeah, it's so, have to get it's getting to the together. point now where we're gonna do a whole show just on scream fucking sequels, man. Yeah, scream <laughs> franchise part two. <laughs> Five, six, and seven. What the fuck? Yeah. Like, Yikes. I know exactly because oh, five I, and six were not enjoyable for me, so this will be a fun episode. Oh, and I can't wait they, to do the Halloween they might have to, they might trilogy. Have to pivot pretty hard with what happened, Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah, I know, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, so there's there's a lot of shows we were talking before the show about all these like ideas that Moods wrote down and stuff, and I'm pretty excited, should be fun. We got yeah. some cool stuff planned yeah, coming it's gonna up. Be fun. It's gonna be fun stuff. Fun stuff. But uh yeah, I, th I think that's gonna that's gonna do it. Venom, where can everybody find you at? All right. As I mentioned earlier, I am on the No More Room in Hell family of podcasts. Go ahead and just search No More Room in Hell and whatever uh, podcast catcher you use, and all the shows should show up there. And other than that, I mean, those are the only shows that I'm really loyal to anymore. Um, I'll still do lots of guest spots, Cut to the Chase, Cinema Beef, um, Bo Ransdell's, oh, The Dark Parade with Bo. 
Um, but as far as the main shows, yeah, it's, it's just going to be those four now. Uh, I, I just, I don't have the time to be on 11 podcasts anymore. <laughs> like I did the first couple of years. No so, doubt. Sadly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, I also did want to just say that, um, me, Tyler and Carly guested on a review. I'm going to, I don't know if it's available, like if he said what we're doing yet, but we, we did a review with Dave Parker for his, uh, show over there on his youtube channel um i'm not sure i don't know if it'll be on the next release of his or down the road but it was a pretty fun time so check that out if you miss dave thanks for the fucking invite on that one you were invited i'm joking I'm actually joking. he started <laughs> off the show with Until i know the a lot end. of you are probably disappointed that yeah. moves isn't <laughs> i actually wanted to be on i actually couldn't do it like it's it was it was short notice i was busy and i'm like Fuck my bloody Valentine! Yeah. Oh, I just ruined it, but whatever. No one's listening. To the show anyways, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Actually, you know what? That episode will probably be out before this is. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's for. I don't know if he was saving it or if he's like putting it out next. You know, so I don't know. But well, no, he does. He does those episodes for his uh his weekly. They're like a random episode during his. I week. know, but he recorded like three. With yeah, people. your quarter was some. With so some I'm not sure course. when ours is coming out. Yeah, whatever. Coming out yeah. on the next show or not. Um, but it was fun. Uh, the movie obviously is like I I love it. <laughs> so right. actually, it was funny. No spoilers, but um, some of us were way higher than others. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> um, wow, crazy. Not saying I, like, weed before I wouldn't podcast. say like I wouldn't say anyone was like N- nobody was low, but, Yeah, like no one's low in the movie. Yeah, well, I can imagine but, who the who the lowest was for sure. <laughs> uh, we but, we didn't give ratings, did we? No, we didn't give ratings. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, because Dave doesn't do ratings on his on his channel. He beats uh, around the bush, is what he does. I always give him shit yeah. for that. Man. I'm like, fuck. I, but, but that's that's the beauty of ratings. I always say ratings are for dummies, anyways, right? So he just doesn't yeah, do. Them. We don't rate either. Yeah, I get. I, I as a just purely as a listener, I like when people rate stuff because sometimes I can't remember what people said about it. Like, but I remember like what they rated it. Yeah. So I'll yeah. be like, yeah, I'll avoid this one. I'll check this one out. Right. Yeah, but people have such differing opinions that a 7.5 to you might be a five to me, you know? So, True. But oh, I, I I'd rather get hear, to know, but I, but I raced on, like but Dave I rate Z, on I favorite know. shit though. Right. Like I don't, yeah. I don't give like you a get, bonafide you kinda rating. Just, you kind of get used to sure, like sure. what everybody's scale is. Yeah. Yeah. Like I know if Dave Z right. gives something like an eight, I'm probably going to like it more than if like Tyler gives someone something an eight. Because because with Tyler it's sometimes yeah. it's just it's just if Tyler gives something over a six dribble. I'm like man this has got to be good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, to be fair, usually if Tyler really likes something, I'll at least find something in it that I like. And a lot and Tyler has steered me to some really good films in general, but sometimes he's just fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I just say ratings for dummies, but I just do it because it's fun to do. It gives yeah. somebody an idea. Yeah of where you're yeah. at kind of thing like but i always tell people i'm like well i'll rate a film four out of ten but not idea. recommend it i'll still recommend it to people so it also gives me an idea of what i thought of something because <laughs> sometimes i forget the movie but i look at my rating and i'm like i liked it oh dude that happened man i like oh, i just did that with a 91 film the other day actually i was like i'm like i looked it up on my letterbox i'm like oh i gave it a four i'm like really <laughs> Yeah, like, well, yeah sometimes I literally yeah can't it literally was a four out of ten i was like oh shit i gotta watch this like that's why letterbox is like one of my favorite things in the world is because that like because i used to keep a diary that's why on letterbox i have stuff that i rated in 2011 because i literally kept a diary of everything that i watched and i rated before letterbox was a thing and right. then i just ported it all in there but like this was like genius for me because I've always wanted to keep track and now it's super convenient. Mm -hmm. But anyway, anyways, yeah, that's going to conclude episode 246 and Italian horror month. Yes. Now we're moving into the Christmas holiday season. So we'll be back next week with not Christmas related. stuff. It's not going to be a Christmas related (laughs) show. It's going to be a, well, everyone's favorite is going to be a zoology show. So stay tuned for that. 
um we might as well just announce it it's zoology volume two it's going to be dogs i keep uh, wanting to say dogs, fucking cats oh, because you dogs. you always say cats and dogs not dogs and cats no right? i want i wanted to do dogs i wanted to do dogs we're, <laughs> okay. we're gonna do it backwards okay. so we're gonna do dogs um the pack Baxter. from 19, the pack from 1977 Baxter from 1989 and the breed from 2006 so we got three the breed. different oh okay wait we're oh. doing the breed 2006 yeah because i think dave was originally supposed to be on the show and i think that was because dave's pick was baxter mine was the pack and you picked the breed so uh i think i just was like i think maybe i just wanted to do something like modern i don't remember why i picked the breed yeah I so the we got the 70s was... 80s and 2000s no 90s that's so strange well with oh, okay. with with well i remember with the cats show i wanted to do strays and dave was like i ain't fucking watching strays again and in, in two years since i watched it for the 1991 show yeah <laughs> and you know on that note so the week after will be zoology volume three cats which is going to be night of a uh, thousand cats from 1972 the uncanny from 77 and the uninvited from 87 so um yeah no no strays yeah see if we would have took that one <laughs> 70s out we could have did 70s 80s 90s with strays but no dave can't watch strays twice in a, in in two years well dave might not be on the show so maybe we can fucking change I it mean, up. we I don't... could change it but now that thousand change. cats is actually a pain in the fucking ass because every cut that i've ever found like i have the dvd it's cut by like 30 minutes like literally 30 minutes yeah, yeah it's fucked we, up we could switch it up and do uh yeah what's so, the last one night of one thousand cats the uncanny on oh, the uninvited okay uninvited yeah so um okay. Yeah, so that'll be the first couple shows. Then we got the uh, Christmas show coming a uh, week after that. And then the next show after that will be the top 10 2023. So stay tuned. And then tuned. we got a bunch more ideas. Might throw in some franchises along the way. Oh, we got trilogies. We, we got, got plenty more zoology that we could do. Oh, we got trilogies. We got fucking Canadian exploitation. Oh, we got tons of things coming up. So stay tuned. Yeah. It'll be fun stuff. All right, Venom. Thank you for, once again for coming on the show. It's always a pleasure to have your voice on. Your Absolutely. input's always amazing, and um, yeah, good show, man. Good show. Absolutely, uh, man. Thanks for having me. Always a bet. pleasure. You bet. Thanks, Everybody, bro. check out Venom's shows. The links will be well. He said all links, but check them out. <laughs> the only don't. problem is if you do check them out, just. Just know going in that you're going to have a healthy dose of Mike Merriman. I know that's a little tough for some people out there, but you know. <laughs> that's yeah. valid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I literally talk to Blake every single day of my life, usually about the same thing over and over again. <laughs> He'll be like, hey, have you seen this? I'll be like, yeah, we talked about it last week, bro. <laughs> oh, fucking Mike. <laughs> All right, man, we're out of here. That's going to conclude episode 246. Check you guys next week. Deuces. Peace. That's all, folks. I'm happy with what we have now. Like, I like moods. Obviously, we've been together forever. No homo. Um, hmm. Or maybe I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> <Maybe a little. laughs> we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> but.